Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there, baby. We savage as fuck. Live right yeah. now. This is Black Pedro. Yo, what's up? This is Shang. Yeah, we right here in your face. In the face, y'all. Yeah, how we in their face if we on the radio? Well, if you stand close to the radio, then, you know then you're in their face. Get I your ass never, by the speaker. I've, I've never understood that when people say in your face and you're on the radio. Well, your ears are like on your face and then, then, your ears, then we get in there. Okay, well, that makes sense because you your that? ears are on your face. That they're right there. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I... I, I, I I didn't get it at first, but I didn't do that. But right uh, now, right now, we got it, y'all. We savage as fuck right here on Dash Radio. Dash Comedy is the channel. Uh, and we are popping the show off right here. I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do a little uh, Instagram video for do the people Instagram right here. Video. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Just be like, oh, yeah. hey, hey, y'all, this is Black Pedro right here. And we are going live right now. It's Tuesday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon on the Pacific, on the West Coast, baby. And this is how we do it at Savage as Fuck At live. Savage as Fuck. That's at right. Savage as Fuck. Yeah, a lot of times... Uh, people have a, a problem with the name. Uh, and, Fuck your feelings. And, and that's what, what I was going to say. Fuck your uh, feelings. Uh, if you have a problem with a name, this is not the show for you. This is, uh, it's not. We this is not care. savage as, as love or savage as, as cuddle. Right. It, it's savage as fuck. Savage as fuck. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what we do. We stay savage right here, y'all. Uh, so, good brother, good brother Shang. Uh, let them know where they can follow My you, man. My brother Noopsy. <laughs> Switch brother Noopsy. Noopsy. <laughs> brother, where can they where can they uh, uh, find you on these grams? They can find me on a, a comedian Shang. But I gotta let you know something. Um, you gotta find Black Pedro. Yeah, man. First, you can hit me on the gram. No, no, here's Shang for he's got the real following. I no, you gotta follow. You halfway down the Yellow Brick Road at this point. I'm doing all right, <laughs> but like, I ain't doing like I need to do. You halfway to Oz. We on I, the way there. There's bro. some girl that got that shows one titty, and I mean she just shows one titty. She got like seven hundred thousand followers. <laughs> yes, that's all it takes is one tit. Yeah, I mean you don't really need two tits. We just but, one nipple away. Yeah, like if we just get get one good tit. Yes, <laughs> we got, this show would be the fucking the biggest show ever. Hey man, uh, but and you guys she got good ones, but I don't, I don't want to, you know, I don't wanna put that out there. You guys can follow me uh, on Instagram at Black Pedro. <laughs> you had to think about it. I'm, well, I'm trying to post and host. I'll at the post same and time. host. So, doing that old post and host. Uh, you know what it is. Uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram at Black Pedro. We do appreciate that. Make sure you also follow this show. I know you're tuned in right now, but if you ever missed a live broadcast, you can catch us on iTunes, Stitcher, Stitcher Google Play. The Google following Play. Monday, we are on. Uh, we're also available in your dash, right? In your dash, like actually in your car. So like if you're driving a car, it's got to be a GMC car. But if you're driving in your car, you can actually turn us on 3 to 5 p.m. You can hear us live. We're in every brand of GM vehicle 2018 yeah. or newer already pre-installed in your dash. Also, right. if you're driving around in that Tesla, you can get us on that Slacker network. Slacker. Slacker. That's right, baby. So you can get us on Slacker. And check this out. Uh, go to Facebook because, you know, Facebook's a big social media entity. Still doing it. Yeah, make sure you follow us. Follow us on the Savage as Fuck page. Comment on anything that you feel that you were uh, disgruntled about. Or if there's something you like about the show, then set, tell us. Because so far you've been very complimentary. But I want to get that one little disgruntled motherfucker that's in his basement that just hates people with free speech. And you know what? And and even better, one up. Don't even wait for the page, right? You could, you could hit us up. Right now, live on the show, because we are live. You could call in 310-986-6110, or is it 6610? 6610. Yeah, 986. 310 yeah. 986 That's it, baby. Uh, go ahead, call. Talk shit. We're going to talk it right back. I and mean, then yeah, hang up on your monkey ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're not, we might not hang up on you, but we don't. I might on accident. Yeah, by, by accident. It would be by accident because For we want sure. your opinion. We want to see what you're thinking. But if the shit is like real left or, or just goofy, then you might get talked about. I just want you to know that ahead of time. This is savage as fuck. Know yeah, what savage you're as fuck. Into. So, you know, yeah, call in 310 986 6610. Savage as fuck. Yes. Black Pedro here. Shang is Yo, in the building. Yo, in the building. Uh, I just want to say some uh, good topics. I mean, this is today's good topics. There are some other things that have happened in the world today that we're going to add to the show because there's a very important vo uh, vote going on right now. There's yes, going to be a very important vote, and uh, hopefully American people step up and get their fucking mind back. That's right. That's yeah. right. Uh, speak well before we even get into the topics, man. How was your weekend? Everything cool? Uh, was well, I I was with you, uh, so <laughs> we uh, did do a little hang. We did a little hang. We uh partied uh for a very long time. We we uh, it was we, a good old time. It, it was a party. Uh, you know, the one thing that L.A. is made for is well, first of all, 
Shout out to all those who came out to support Savage as Fuck Live. We were at the dojo at Sycamore Tavern Very on good Saturday. Crowd. Very good crowd. Uh, good laughers in the house. Surprisingly great, good crowd. Great, great comics on the uh, on the um, I mean, lineup. So it was Black good old Pedro time. was on we the show. It. Jeff Urea he, was there. He did quite well. <laughs> yeah, he did quite well. Camilla Cleese, Stacia Patwell, some 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 really funny, uh, talented individuals. Yes, on that show. So shout out to everybody who came to support that. Also, make sure you hit us up. Uh, for our upcoming shows, right? So tomorrow, I think it's tomorrow. Tomorrow, Wednesday tomorrow. night, yeah, yeah, the fifth yeah. of September, uh, we will be at Oxnard Levity Live. Yes, and if you want to get on the list, all you got to do is go to our Facebook page or go to Black Pedro's. Hit me up on Instagram, Instagram. Yep. and you DM him. If you want to get on the guest list, you can get on the guest list for tomorrow night at eight o'clock at Levity Live, Oxnard, California. It's going to be a hot show. It's a great, great room, and you're going to have a great, great time because Savages Fuck Live is exactly that. Savages Fuck Live, just like we are here. But imagine that with a whole bunch of live jokes to where you can laugh and interact with that's right that's why we're doing it and uh so yeah uh thank you guys for coming out to those make sure you come out also uh september 11th next tuesday i believe we'll both be at los globos theater for a comedy pop-up uh yeah uh, event. so yes, uh, and yeah. big shout out to comedy pop-up for those who don't know they're the ones who uh, produce us and get us on itunes every week for and, you and and stitcher and, and stitcher and google play google and, play and, so, and yeah, all of them uh they get us out there for you guys too so make sure you check out comedy pop-up uh, that's next Tuesday, Los Globos Theater. Tomorrow, all our Ventura County people, we are at Levity Live. Yes. And again, all the people, okay, I'm always apprehensive because sometimes I'm a pessimist. And I admit that. <laughs> sometimes, not all the time, or I wouldn't still be doing this comedy shit. I would have gone back to, you know, just knocking people's heads in that we're at the nightclub. Yeah. But uh, no. It sounds like more fun. Honestly. Which is, you know, sometimes could be more fun, especially when you get backup. I really think uh, it is. But one on one with some drunk dude is, is difficult. <laughs> it's difficult. But I, I just want to say thank you for all the people that did come to the show and actually say, hey, we dig what you're doing. So, right. I mean, and I, if that sounds sensitive, uh, I don't care, even though we're on Savage as Fuck. <laughs> sensitive. I still can say thank you, yeah. motherfucker. And then say fuck your feelings at yeah. the same time. At the, damn at the same time, because I'm, 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 you know, multi-leveled. Yeah, man. But, uh, but then going into the rest of the weekend, right, Saturday we had the show that was hot. Uh, Sunday, man, big shout out to uh, Kiss and Grind. One man. Of the, one of the things that L.A. is built for, made for, yes. the reason they installed all the damn palm trees is for day drinking. Okay, yeah, It's just, it's just one of, of the damn things we good at yeah, in L.A. Get fucked up during the day. Vegas, Miami, yes. L.A. We good for day drinking. Okay, sun's out. Martinis up, pinkies up. Let's go. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And it was a good time, and the, and the DJ was incredible. And it, shout out to Victor Duplay and du everybody. Victor ever. Duplay was putting it Mur down. Murderation man. Yeah, what a guan warrior. Ra ra. Kill a style. Come down, select a. But no, it was it was off yeah. the chain. There was a Sunday. lot of lovely ladies. I didn't get to have sex with one of them. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I thought yet, about it. Yes. Yet. Yeah, yet. man. So no, it was it was a nice social event. Eventually, nice nice way to kind of uh, bring a summer to an end. You yeah. know what I mean, right before Labor Day, it was it was the way to be. So yeah, shout out to Kiss and Grind. Shout out Victor Duplay. Uh, shout out to this weekend, man. I had now, a ball. I, it was a good time, and uh, well, yeah, I could tell you did, Pedro. Uh, hey, hey, well, you know, chaperon the, I'm tell chaperoning you these kids at the club is, <laughs> no, is difficult. No, 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 no. You got break it up. No, back I'm, up. I'm just telling you right back now. Back it up. Back no. it up. Wait a minute. Like, yeah, you you got you's a, you you definitely know you I'm not going to say that Pedro's is a ladies man cuz he's definitely not that. He's not like a cold-hearted like that type of but he can definitely <laughs> attract a woman. Wasn't me. No, it it was absolutely you. I mean, you can attract a woman and you don't need, you don't attract no scrubs. I I I thought I'd see you with a few mud ducks, but you be having <laughs> top shelf self top shelf hey, chicks. Man. And uh, but I mean there it should be at least one mud duck. I'm a at least one oh, ugly pfft. chick. <laughs> Bro, you ain't got to dig too deep to find a, a few taco trucks in my past, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, I you know I do consider myself an ambassador to the opposite sex. Uh, uh, that makes know, sense. Trying yeah. to ingratiate and bring you know relations, relations <laughs> to, to their you know to where and they should be. Penis <laughs> and relationships. It. That's it. That's all I want to do. Penis. I'm just trying to bring us all together. With an option to buy. I want us to all come together. You know what I'm saying? As one. As one. As one. In life. Yeah. That, in love. Yeah, no, so shout out this weekend, man. Had a had a great old time. Yeah, it was time. a good time. Uh, that being said, man, I think, you think we should start the show, dog? Maybe we should start recording. Nah, I don't think so. Nah. I don't want to record. Yeah, let's not broadcast this one. Yeah, let's Fuck not. It. Let's just, let's just. Just a practice run, y'all. <laughs> yeah, we're just going. <laughs>
So <laughs> I'm just gonna talk about my inner feelings <laughs> while they play Drake's "Kiki." Key Key, do you love me? Yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna do that the whole show. It's like I don't understand why she didn't call me back, and then I'm gonna do the Kiki dance and get hit by a car. <laughs> Yo, the motherfuckers that have been getting hit by cars, jumping out that car, oh, doing the fantastic. Kiki dance is fucking hilarious. It's this fantastic. lady got hit by a, uh, uh, I mean, a uh, uh, this truck housed this bitch. And I don't know as her, it should, as it should. But she jumped out the car while it was in traffic, and I saw it, and I just, I told myself this is not funny, but it's the way her <laughs> it's the body way she bounced. <laughs> bounced was fucking it's hilarious. Always the way they hit and the she ground. was gorgeous. It was just, I was like, oh man, what's she gonna do now? <laughs> now that you don't have pretty left, cause you definitely <laughs> fucked up now. Now that you're a hunchback, what you gonna do now? <laughs> Other than work up in the tower. Ringing a bell. Sanctuary. <laughs> exactly, man. <laughs> That's it. But why am I, Why do I laugh at, like, evil shit? Like, I saw a couple of, like, this racist dude. Why didn't he was a racist dude? I saw some video where it was one of somebody from the alt-right, mm. and somebody out of the audience just ran up and Boop. punched the shit <laughs> out of ass. him. Hell yeah. And I laughed my ass off, and people went, <gasps> and I was like, yo, that was fantastic. Run that back. <laughs> Select our rewind. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he busted him in the grill, and I guess because he's a you know a racist, I was like, oh, I don't have any sympathy. But I mean, people felt I was evil because I thought it was the most justified punch in the face in the world. It's like he earned that one. He earned that punch in the face. Well, you know who else has earned one? If we we gonna, already if know. We gonna, if we're going to talk about people <laughs> that need to get punched that in their fucking that could, face, that could catch a knuckle sandwich, boy. It is. It is our current president, uh, Donald Putin. Yeah, we already know. Uh, so, <laughs> interesting weekend. You know, we we did say goodbye to Aretha last week uh, here on the show. Yes. Pay, paid a nice little tribute ourselves. But uh, there was also, and shout out to Detroit, my hometown. Yeah. I'm wearing my Detroit versus everybody hat right now. Yeah, he's very pro Detroit. But uh, not not everybody quite understood how black Detroit, even though they're gentrifying it right now, is we we still black in Detroit. Black as hell. And Aretha's... Uh, Smooth eight nine hour funeral. It was. <laughs> Just, uh, it showed everybody like what Detroit do. Yeah, <laughs> how uh, we do. Let me tell you something. That that uh, eighteen hour funeral was uh, fantastic. <laughs> After the twenty third hour, I just said, you know what? Everybody's singing on this bitch, and we're we gonna we're gonna get into that in a second, right? But real quick, because we always like to we start off with with a little Putin talk, a little Donald Putin a little Putin, talk, a little yeah. Putin. A little Putin ain't never hurt nobody. Um, <laughs> But you know there was a, <laughs> Aretha's Aretha's funeral. Uh, that was an epic event. But also this weekend we put away another American hero uh, in John McCain. Yes, Senator John and even, McCain. And I, I, you know what's cool though? It was very bipartisan. There was people on the right and people on the left. There was Republicans and Democrats that gave him big props. Except for one orange motherfucker. You know who wasn't on the right or the left? Yeah. Donald Putin. Donald Putin. <laughs> was, not Putin. <laughs> was not invited. Was not invited. No, he was uninvited. He was like shunned from it. And this is like yeah. the the third or fourth funeral, like he has not been allowed yeah. to go to. Like d- nobody in in like posthumously, motherfuckers don't want him there. Yeah. You know like, what I'm saying? Like nobody I'm, wants I know I'm dead, but I still don't want your ass dead. I don't want to see you at my <laughs> shit where I can't see shit. Yeah. I don't want to <laughs> see your ass. When my eyes stop working, I still don't want you to be in the room. <laughs> That's how bad. I think the people forgetting, even though he got his 33% base, how many motherfuckers absolutely despise this dude? Dead people. Dead people. Half of the people who hate him are dead like, at this point and still don't, <laughs> don't want like, him there. <laughs> like zombies would walk right past him going, I don't want to bite this motherfucker. <laughs> he is. Ew. I bet you he tastes nasty. Ew. Yeah, I bet you he tastes, he tastes like, like Russian dressing. It just... Mm-hmm. Like, it just He's the only thing zombies would ask for ketchup for. Yeah, like, yeah, I need some seasoning with this motherfucker. <laughs> he's just like, I just think he he's he constantly throwing out distractions. But then he's on a Twitter storm this weekend, so inappropriately going after Jeff Sessions and talking shit about all these different Jeff Sessions. For the people that don't know, is the attorney general, mm-hmm. whatever the fuck. Uh, he's not even. He's actually he escaped from Middle Earth. He's <laughs> just. If you look at Jeff Sessions, you can pull him up if you're listening. He is a straight fucking gnome. I feel like Jeff Sessions is going to be the next dude to play Colonel Sanders in the KFC campaigns. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we You do. want some gong fried chicken, man? Come on down here. We got a gong, gong bucket for you, yes. man. Feed the whole family five dollars, man. Gong head. Yeah, it just seems like he's like, you like fried chicken? You like fried chicken in segregation? If you we like, got both, but not at the same time. We 
don't want to give those women the same rights. <laughs> we only serve white meat. Well, right. and, <laughs> <laughs> no mixed, no, no mixed meals. No here. mixed meals here, boy. I mean, oh, he, and shout out to Cassie Dang always she, throwing in that that nice one. Our, that, our producer extraordinaire. Tag. That was a very good time. Yeah, and make sure you follow her. Where are they gonna follow you at, Cassie? Twinkie. Twinkie. That's right. T W N K E E. No I. No, I, no, I, I Twinkie. Uh, but uh, yeah, man. So, so you know, the, the 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 Trump shit is piling up. He can't even get invited to a funeral these days. Right. He's got beef with his own staff and attorney general. He's going after his own FBI. But right. but and and then here's 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 the kicker. Here's the next one coming. Right. We're a week away from a uh, seemingly a, a a a firestorm book dropping. Okay, so legendary reporter Bob Woodward, right? Yeah, you know him. Uh, yeah, from uh, Watergate, right? He's one of the rep- one of the two reporters who exposed Nixon and his campaign for the, very respected the dirt they did, right? So legendary. He's won two Pulitzers at this point. So right. you, you you can't fuck with this dude, right? Yeah, he's no Omarosa. <laughs> Let's keep it real. Omarosa is. Take that, Kendrick. Uh, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> Ambrose is a literary giant, number one. Yeah. I like to put that out there. Um, I've read a lot of her books, and I thought that I've gotten a lot of insight on how to be just the scummiest bitch in the world. <laughs> in the world of co- uh, coloring books, she is, she uh, is prolific. Prolific. <laughs> I'm just saying. Her shit uh, about uh, cats and dogs was amazing. <laughs> and the differences. <laughs> the differences. But uh, legendary reporter Bob Woodward is uh, dropping a book next week. Right. Uh, I, I believe on September 11th it should be coming out. Uh, simply called fear. <laughs> yeah, and it's a uh, you know it's a uh, you know about his investigative reporting into the Trump administration, uh, going through you know recordings, documents, letters, memos, diaries of of former staff members, and and and, and correspondences from Trump himself. And he um, he recorded um, tons of interviews with Trump's initial lawyer. Yes, and. Now his lawyer is saying, no, I didn't say that. He said, motherfucker, I got you on tape. You on tape. Sir. Like, like he said that. Yeah. I talked to I talked to him this morning. He said, I got these motherfuckers on tape. <laughs> these bitches is going down. They're going but down. I'm just telling you right now, this is the weird part. This is the weird part. They're going to try to deny everything. He recorded all of his interviews. And uh, the, I've read segments of it because they did release segments of it. I was watching it this morning. And it's fucking it. it the Amorosa one was more frivolous bullshit. Like you just can't hardly believe her, but some of her shit was real. Yeah, this like one is the yeah, yeah. A guy like yeah, Bob Woodward duh. though. Bob Woodward is this thorough investigation. Mueller people. got a copy of it already. That's yeah. all I'm saying. This is investigative reporting. One of my favorite things was um, in just reading the article about the sort of preview of of the book itself uh, were the the sort of mock interview sessions that Trump's own team. Did with Trump? Yeah, I'm sorry, with Putin to uh, yeah, with Donald Putin to to try and um, you know, prep him for uh, you know, in case Mueller ever got an interview Subpoenas with him. him, and they they are so trying to convince Trump not to sit down with session. I mean, with Mueller because. He failed with them. He failed. In fact, he got mad and flipped out and said, I don't want to play anymore. I'm out of here. <laughs> he didn't. He, he was like, you think I was struggling? Yeah. Like, he had no idea that he had failed this like, thing. Why? Like, he keeps why? perjuring. He, like, they, they, his own former attorney was like, he's a fucking liar. Like, they don't want to put him up there because they he can't tell the truth. He will perjure himself, his own staff believes. And not only that, they didn't just say that. They said, and he's fucking dumb. What am I still doing here? With this fucking dummy. He's a dummy. People are like, this is the worst job I've ever had. He's a fucking liar. He's a liar and He's a an dummy. idiot. He has the comprehension of a fifth or sixth grader. <laughs> Tops. And I think that's being generous. But I oh, think this, you know, book, it, go. this book is going to definitely be something that is going to be used. This, this might trial. be one that, that I actually would want to read, honestly. Because, I read segments. I read, I read a, about 10 pages. A lot of them seem, you know, a lot of the stuff on Trump seems gossipy or and i know this name fear is like you know it's inciting right fear <laughs> right. <laughs> dumb, wa- dumb dumb he wanted revenge <laughs> fear what he got was you should fear. be the ad guy <laughs> yes. you should do the commercial. in a world <laughs> in a world of orange madness <laughs> fear one thing grew <laughs> fear he's uh. just he's just let me tell you something i think this book is this book sounds be, like this is one, no i the the stuff I read because they were releasing different portions segments, of it, yeah. segments of it, and I read ten pages. Yeah, I always read on the toilet, so uh, <laughs> I, I take in while I'm taking out. That's and the think tank, think tank. And I was uh, this morning, like had to be like six in the morning. And I was I was reading it, going, "Oh, this is fucked up." Got your ass. Gotcha, gotcha. 
Um, yeah. So one of one of the little favorite segments I read out of too was like uh, how staffers would like take documents off of his desk. Yeah. Like there was one there was one uh, document um, that they snatched off of his desk so that he wouldn't find it and, and potentially sign it. That would have it would have pulled us out of like a, a a trade deal with South Korea. But in doing that, it would have jeopardized our ability to detect a North Korean missile launch within seven seconds, right? So currently we can detect a North Korean missile launch within seven seconds, but Trump had a document on his desk that would have fucked all right. of that up. <laughs> and, you know, staffers around him are like, uh, swoop de doop de doo and they just scoop that off <laughs> the desk. They switched it out for something easily he could read, like... <laughs> Benji in the Benji in the dog of journey or something. I think that forget the name of that little uh, my I, son used to have. I think like, they I think they gave him a contract for blue apron food yeah, services yeah. or whatever. <laughs> Just like order like, your meals. Or a McDonald's <laughs> online. It's, it's <laughs> very important. Yeah, because he but you know what I think the thing is now I'm one, I'm seeing a lot more women running for uh Congress, which is fantastic. A lot more women because I think we need more women because women, even though they can be cruel, horrible bitches, they actually uh, <laughs> Only when you love them. No, I'm the only when you love them. But on um, for the most part, overall, women are more compassionate, can multitask, and they can actually have some empathy when it comes to the world. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what we're gonna need. And the women that are running are not playing. So I think that hopefully the blue wave will happen. I don't know, man, because they some cheating motherfuckers. But if the blue wave happens, we're going to have more women in Congress than ever before. And it's needed. And I think the women are really not going to take no shit off of him now because they feel empowered. That's right. Yep. That's right. Uh, and so feel, uh, speaking of empowerment, hey, this is segue. Segway. You know I love these. Uh, Nike caps back, baby. Oh man, Nike I, capping I posted back. That, yeah. And when I say cap, I'm talking about Capper Nick. All right, yeah. so uh, and shout Serena out. and Serena, they came, they came hard with Serena. They too. did too. They did. But th- this is even this is actually even harder. I think, like, yeah, because the Serena one, like, for those who don't know, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. The French Open basically banned her her superhero Wakanda cat suit that she wore yes. when she was kicking ass at the French Open, looking devastatingly stunning, yeah. right? Uh, they they want to ban that. They want to take away her her black girl magic. Well, uh, you know they already t- they already tried to take away Colin Kaepernick's black man magic. Uh, Didn't the, work. The NFL did right. They they locked him out. People are boycotting. I'm boycotting. I'm not even watching the NFL anymore. Uh, shout out to my frat brother Colin Kaepernick for staying strong. Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. In oh the house. wow, wow. Hey, yeah. yeah, you see, yeah, he had to throw yeah. that in there. Right there, eight adults yeah. of four ninety seven, baby. Uh, <laughs> uh, but check this out, right? Yeah, but what about the cues, motherfucker? <laughs> My God, nah. But check this out, Colin Kaepernick. Right, uh, yeah. Nike has just signed him to be uh, the face of their their thirtieth annual Just Do It campaign. It's fantastic, and it is. Um, what is the cap? Oh, man. Let me, I got, let me get the caption together. Go to my Instagram. I posted it. Yeah, but uh, either way, man, it's 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 really inspirational uh, kind of story here where it's, first of all, it's it's great to see a major sports, you know, manufacturer, corporation. Um, and by the way, you're listening to uh, Savage as Fuck right here on Dash Radio. Yes, that's right. And you can download us, the app. If you don't download the app, though, I'm going to let you know right now, it's going to itch when you pee. That That is the quickest that is, yeah. The quickest way for me to smear uh, Vaseline on your windows. You ain't cleaning that off yes. for a while. Okay? Yes, so download Foggy. the app. You listen to Savage AF on Dash. But also, you can listen to us a week from now on Instagram, Stitcher, Slacker. That's right. Uh Google Play. <laughs> Google Play. That's it. What's up? So, so, so going back to this, right? So Kaepernick, uh, they they've squeezed him out of the the NFL, right? And he's they curr- banned him. He's currently in a in a in a, a sort of a arbitration situation uh, in which an arbitrator recently um, decided that his his case against the NFL was, should be allowed to go forward. Right. right? They um, they basically on cap side. Yeah, and he has a, he has a case that he has been locked out of the league. Um, Due to collusion between owners, and that's against the binding contract between the NFL Players Association and the league itself, right? They can't, they can't do it like that. Um, I mean, they can, but they ain't supposed to. No, they got to give the man a give the man a, a workout. You know what I'm saying? Let him throw the ball. The boy, don't throw the ball right. Then, then you cut him. But you can't just go. Oh, he's a troublemaker. We're gonna keep him out, right? So, yeah. and essentially, that's what happened. That's apparently why I, the nigger just throw the ball <laughs> that's, and that's, shut your mouth and don't kneel. That's Come why, on, nigger, you're that, being too much. That's why I'm not not watching right now. Um, 
But Nike, let me see if I can uh, even did find you, the did, thing here. No, I got it right here. Uh, let me tell you something, man. Uh, oh, shit. And my phone dies. So, uh, <laughs> so you ain't finding hey, that. fuck that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, Nike's had this campaign, Just Do It. Uh, and now Colin Kaepernick is the face. I've also seen them. Uh, they they came out with a, they featured a, a Muslim athlete, a, a female. Yeah. Uh, and they had a Nike hijab. That they've made now, like a you know, for yeah. head coverings for yeah. End for of the day, it's profit. Female Muslim <laughs> athletes, yeah. Um, of course, right? Of course. I'm Nike, I mean, most but, corporate interests, yeah, are going to be about stand. profit. But yes, you you they chose a side and they chose the right one. Yeah. And I got my got on my little Nikes right now today to just go ahead and celebrate and support that. But uh, what is interesting, of course, are the reactions to all of this, right? So while this is, uh, you know, as I see it, a beautiful gesture of patriotism, not only on Colin Kaepernick's part, but on Nike's part to, you know, if not capitalize on it, at least yeah. support the shit, right? But uh, you have, you know, these Americans, Americans out here, you know what I'm saying? Flag waving. They are Frederick mad. Flag loving, uh, son bitching, sister fucking, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, white mayonnaise and, and potato salad making ass motherfuckers. Uh, not even good potato salad. <laughs> Just with the, with the red skin still on yeah. the potato. Who the fuck does that? And is that dill? I tell you, and raisins, son bitch. Yeah. Carrots, is that carrots? Anyways, these motherfuckers are out here literally burning all of their Nike paraphernalia. Which Nike already made money off of, so, uh, uh, dummies. Be- it's so dumb. They like cutting off the top of their socks. Yeah, it's they're like, cutting out the smooch out of your shorts. How do your socks stay? <laughs> you know what? Because they're fucking stupid. You fucked just up the elastic. Whole, the socks, just donate it. Okay, yeah, but they, donate it. Somebody, somebody said if, if, if I got posted it, it's like if you're going to do that, then give them to veterans. Yeah. That don't have shoes or some homeless people or something. So many but, people could use Nike. Those number one, that's like the same shit that happened with NWA. Is like, yeah, fuck them. He's like, I, I, I'm uh, Ice Cube, not Ice Cube. Um, Dre uh, probably. No, it wasn't Dre. It was Easy E. Sound. I don't give a fuck. They already bought the album. <laughs> yeah. Like so, it's just you're dummies. If you think right. and Nike's huge, so if you really think that because of that, Nike's gonna roll over and be like, oh, you're right, you're right. What the fuck we thinking? You're out of your fucking mind. And I'm so glad that they did it that way because even if it's just about profit, the bottom line is it's going to send a strong message to everybody mm-hmm. and the people that it's are on the profit. fence. Their, their, their stock has dropped. Their stock has dropped. Like since today. Their stock has already dropped. I don't know. I don't, That's I don't fine. Have the numbers. That's but fine. Like, but you so got to so take a doing, stance. They're, they're taking a stance for... For What's the, right for the cause, not right. for their own profits, because no, they're actually no doubt. no doubt. It's actually bad for them financially. I mean, they're. they're I think Nike will still be okay. Kaepernick's getting his yeah, own yeah. shoe. He's getting his own in shoe out of this. Run, in the long run, it's smart of them to do it. I, it's I do more believe of a so. Community. I think. I think this will be one of those things when you look back at the end of the day, they will have come down on the right, right side. They took that of history. Or, and they took that stand. Or. Some muskrat stew drinking motherfucker is gonna put a bullet <laughs> in Kaepernick's head. Muskrat stew. <laughs> that's that's what they drink. Muskrat stew, and and they drink the bath water of their children. Since if I can't fuck them, I can at least drink them. Uh, by the by the way, that is. Oh uh, what does that even mean? That's so gross. Uh, well, I put it out there, and that's that's something I heard. God damn it. Hashtag drink fuck. Drink fuck. Um, it's like I can't have sex with my dog. Her, but I can drink her juices. Oh, I mean, oh Lord. Oh, <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, equally gross. It, I made it more gross. But hey. no, the, the bottom line is, I, I was going to say the bottom yeah. line is this. Okay, I really think that, one, he has to get security now, like, big time. Because if they're cutting off their socks, you know they want to cut his head off. Yeah. Or we won't have, we, I don't want to see him hanging from a tree. Because I could see them being that extreme. Yeah. Just like they said there would be a, a civil war in, we, in case we impeach Trump. Mm-hmm. I think that people are that passionate about this shit with Kaepernick. That's great, and I want to see it happen. Let's go. Let's go to. Let's go to head over this shit. Bring it on, motherfucker. Okay. Listen, the slogan they put out with Kaepernick's face, you know, nice, I, huge, yeah. close up, afro puffed out. Uh, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. Right? Yeah. And this is exactly what he did. Right. He, he got on a knee. They asked him why he was taking a knee. He said one sentence about it, basically, and that was his entire NFL career. Done. Done. Done deal. Because he said he was he was taking a knee to but, bring awareness right. to the unjustified killings of unarmed black people well, by, but, by the police. I mean, come on. You, you had your fingers up. I had to shoot you. Okay? <laughs> you got to see their side of it, man. 
I, you know what? You've changed, Black Pedro. Yeah, you have changed. I have. I'm letting you know right now. I, I don't like that son of a bitch, Kaepernick. I'm, a, I'm against it. I'm, I'm appalled that he would actually want equal rights. <laughs> you, you, son you, of a bitch, come son on. Son of a bitch, you niggers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, geez, uh, just throw the ball. Just throw the ball. But you know who's behind him, which is great. Other athletes are actually stepping up and and backing him. LeBron, I, yo, LeBron is going in the paint. LeBron's like, fuck that. I support him 100%. Oh, yeah. And LeBron's, what isn't, when you say LeBron is the the biggest um, um, basketball player right now, at least. Oh, de- out all, of every day. Yeah, because, yeah. no, people are like, you know, uh, like, like, well, I like Jordan. Well, Jordan ain't playing no more. He's dead. No, he's not dead. To but Jordan game. never said shit. To me, he, he's dead. Jordan, Jordan was always bitching up. He never said nothing because he knew he, he was. Not, yeah, he was, not, he was, just, he he was about selling nothing. shoes. He's about selling Michael shoes. Michael Jordan was strictly about selling that goddamn Jordan logo and Kobe? Wouldn't, wouldn't come down on the side of anything. Yeah, Kobe was too busy dicking down girls <laughs> he in, in Denver. In, in, <laughs> and, and he was pa- in, the, in the high altitudes. Yeah, yeah he, was, he had to shut up and just play ball. He had to just shut up and play ball because <laughs> after you buy a ring for $3 million, you better, you yeah. better hit some more fucking... Uh, Baskets, but I just think that the fact that I see other people supporting him. But let's be real: the people that are mad about this are white people. Not a lot of black people mad about this ad. It's white people. Yeah. Why am I whispering on the radio? It's mm. white people. <laughs> Sounds like you're calling them. Yeah, like like I'm calling them, and all of a sudden we go outside. There's a bunch of white people. You called us. You, you yeah. tell me some bitch. You want us? You want us? I'm just saying right now. Right now, I think that. They need to get this stuff together and understand. One, it's a strong ad. It's a great ad. It's going to sell a lot of uh, shoes once the shoe comes out. And there's nothing you can fucking do, period. And obviously, the people that made the decision are white. I, I don't think there's anybody that's on the executive panel of this advertisement that's black. <laughs> Not right. Yeah. yeah. To be no, yeah, no. It's a, it's a, it's a definitely an opportunity for them to. Uh, I mean, well, it, it is a risk by Nike to a certain degree. I mean, you, you're, you're associating your brand with a controversial um, topic, and they're coming down on the side that, yeah, most Americans, like you said, American. white people and stuff aren't. White yeah, people. They're not siding with this. They don't They don't get it. Trump has stirred them up into a, a froth mouth fervor. and uh, <laughs> Muskrat stew froth mouth fancy. <laughs> but ling, ding, ding, ling, ding, ding. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Real quick, don't forget y'all are listening to Savage as fuck. I'm Black Pedro. This is Shang, Shang in the can, building. Where can they follow you real Yo, quick? Yo, follow me on Instagram, comedian Shang, S-H-A-N-G. And, and you can also follow our page, Savage as fuck, on Facebook. That's right. That's right. And follow me, Black Pedro, at Black Pedro on Instagram. Speaking of black, <laughs> let's get back to Auntie Riri. <laughs> uh, that's Aretha Franklin, man. Uh, Speaking of black. Her home going right. Always been Speaking on black. Speaking of black, baby. Uh, Aretha, she went on home this weekend. And uh, back in my hometown of Detroit, small French village, Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and you know, just like I was saying, I don't, I don't think people realized, um, how black Detroit really is. There were like 7,000 pink Cadillacs on the road, just, just pimped out for Aretha. Okay. As the, they should be, baby. The funeral <laughs> was literally, literally eight hours long, like a full shift of work. Well, McCain's was three days, so fuck you. <laughs> no, 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 that's not. No, no, that's not even a few. Like, no, I know, I know. And because she would, you know, they took Aretha's body around a few places, and yeah, you know, they, she was. She, so, she, she's she's touring. I, she's touring after she had died. Yeah, yeah, and you know, he's a U.S. senator. You know, they they do that for statesmen. Yeah, they'll let your body lie in state, as they say, and show it at libraries and right. whatever. Um, but like the actual, I'm sure McCain's actual ceremony was probably a good Private. 47 minutes or some shit, yeah. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then everybody's in the but, garden. But Aretha Franklin was an icon, and I think that even though McCain touched a lot of people with, not how many that sounded so bad that he touched a lot of people, not as many people as Trump touched. But I'm just saying, I think that um, she touched people over the decades with her music, and people grew up on it, and people got married to it. So mm-hmm. I think they have more of an affinity to her. And that's why it was so long. They were like, I know you're gone, but we got to get this all out to let you know how much we loved Aretha Franklin. And she and she didn't sound like anybody else. Like if you think about all the singers, a lot of singers sound like other singers. She was just pretty much her. No doubt. No doubt. She was fantastic. And so Aretha Franklin, of course, you're going to bring everybody out. But um, did you like so there were some moments, though, that were corny. 
Well, not even corny. So, first of all, do we the preacher? I'm trying to find this reverend's name who who basically fully molested Ariana Grande yeah. <laughs> at the podium. Like this was. This is like one of the most awkward, inappropriate things I've ever seen. Like, okay, we we all remember coming to America. You know, one of Eddie Murphy's greatest movies is fantastically hairy, hilarious. If you haven't seen it yet, um, I think the next bus comes in half an hour. Step in front of it. Fuck you. Okay, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go watch that movie. Um, but Arsenio Hall, one of the many characters he played in that movie, was that Reverend. Yeah, it's like yeah. <laughs> he's like. <laughs> yeah, <amen>. he's like <laughs> If God is wrong, I don't want to be right. <laughs> uh, he's hosting the, the Black Awareness uh, account. But this this reverend at Ariana Grande's thing reminded me of that dude, just looking women up and down. And he, he's he got his arm around Ariana Grande. And you know how sometimes, like, you put your arm around a woman, you usually catch that waist area. Right. The little the little no man's land right before you get to the, the hip and the side cheek, the side ass cheek. We all, we all love it, but you, can't, you just can't touch it, especially when you first meet them and you're strangers or whatever. Right. So he didn't even have his hand there, right? Hand way up, way up in breast land. And he is, he just got the hand fully cupped around. If you're watching on Facebook Live, I'm molesting myself and just trying to show y'all. <laughs> and he's like talking like, hey, baby. <laughs> I know, right? That's so like, funny. Like keeps it there. Yeah, and it just keeps yeah. the hand and there. she's like just, looking at just, it. Yeah, she's like, she's got that look like. Uh, like looking at his hand like, hello. Like, you know what? I, I, I bet you if Bill Cosby was alive, he goes, this is the best <laughs> funeral ever. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> look at the titties. I mean, it Bill, was almost, Bill Clinton was there, and that motherfucker Bill, was drooling was, in the front row. Like, hey, look at this. Bill, but he she's wished she fine. was the reverend. I mean, she's fine. I saw how they was looking at her, but I'm saying the, it was to the point where if you're watching it, you felt like, man, if that was my daughter, I'd bust this motherfucker up. Well, I'm like, can can somebody in the congregation speak up, please? Nobody can, can I get an a instead of an amen? Can I get a hey man? <laughs> hey man, <laughs> what are you doing? Hey man, man. take your hand off her titty. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Is- <laughs> Yeah, that's, but, that's not your titty. That's not <laughs> your Oh, and, and he threw and he threw a racist ass joke at her too. He was like, now when yeah. I first saw Ariana Grande on the program, I thought it was a new meal at Taco Bell. <laughs> wow. And then and then gonna feel on her titty. I'm like, bro. But, man, yeah. yo, but I think that's it, horrible. Well, no, I'm not acting like black people don't got a whole bunch of crazy. We got a ton of crazy. But that was one of the most inter- I'm glad I don't have daughters because I'd I'd have busted that motherfucker up. But this the part I wanted I know. Like the the Reverend Sharpton definitely went there, and he turned it into yeah this is about Aretha but what about this motherfucking Trump <laughs> yeah 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 like you know and he said he didn't he didn't he didn't work for you he was hired by you to mm-hmm. sing it wasn't like he worked for you and because Trump said yeah I knew her yeah she worked for me once <laughs> what the fuck yeah. you can't just say something good McCain he died yeah. Yeah, I didn't really like him. She so. worked for me once, made her sound like she was some mam- like, yeah. mammy yeah. housemaid right. who, yeah. who had a trial run and didn't quite cut yeah. it or some shit. I mean, like, I'm sure had that's, fire. What, that's what he meant. He meant, yeah, no, yeah, but that's my Negro. That's my African American. <laughs> she happens to sing. I she own that one. one. I own, yeah. She, <laughs> I paid a lot for that one. Yeah, but I, I just think that that the funeral, even though it was long as fuck and I had to watch it in segments. Like it was like uh, like if you're purging on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Basically, that's what I had to do with that. I had to watch some and go. Oh man, I gotta I gotta go eat. I gotta <laughs> I gotta wash my ass. I mean, people people were the internet was was killing it, right? People were commenting on like like Louis Farrakhan didn't move. Like he just he just stayed there the whole time. Didn't have to get up and go pee. Meanwhile, rapper Big Sean falling asleep, nodding off. You know what I'm saying? It was yeah. like seeing stuff like that, and I'm like, yeah. How do you sit there for eight hours and not have to? Like I would have had to pee like three four times right like like that also w- one criticism i will give oh here and we it's go not, it's not even about the ceremony itself it it is and i'm gonna I'm have to lick shots out and i know y'all listening barack and michelle obama but and i get you you former states people former president and flotus you don't pick john mccain's funeral over aretha's funeral when you're the first black family of the nation ever you go to Are- you go to detroit to Aretha's funeral. Nah, first. man. No. no. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. I'm putting no. my and foot by down. The way, so black before they weren't. They, they were not on the same day. Okay. 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 They, you, okay. They, mother, you gonna, no. If you tell me that Obamas can't get a fucking flight, <laughs> I'm going to say fuck you. Okay? Maybe he had some shit to do. Maybe he had some personal shit to do. Number one, I see what you're saying, but no, he had to go to McCain's because you still have to appease the 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 overall. They were actual friends. They were actual it friends. It was a nice, I mean, yeah, but at the same time. And by the way, Nike's coming out with an Aretha Franklin 
um, a hat. Did it? Yeah, so so wait, are we saying are we saying that Aretha didn't sing at they shit at the first night? Yes. With with the, she had a raccoon on her head and yes. she looked like a fucking she was a she, diva. She had a, she was furred the fuck out. Yeah. None of it, I'm sure none of it was faux because she's from Detroit. But, we don't do faux fur, nigga. We kill raccoons. No, it was and real. Wear that bitch. But I still Chin think Chilla. that. You see, I get what you're saying, and a lot of black people saying, "Well, you should have been at Aretha Franklin's." Like, yo, he can't do everything. He could be a boat. They weren't the same. He, okay, so what? They were not the same. I mean, day. but you got to understand, as a political figure, he had to go to the political. He had to do that. But I'm first. saying you don't diss Aretha. You go to Aretha too. He didn't diss too. her. You yeah, go. You got to go to both. I'm not saying he did. They dissed him. But I'm saying you gotta go to he, both. He didn't. He didn't say, "Ah, man, I'm glad that bitch is dead." But I, I know that. I'm that. Not, and I'm not saying that, Brock. I know you're listening. I'm not saying you said fuck Aretha. Yeah. Oh. But I'm saying it could have been a security. Yeah. You don't want all the black people. All <laughs> no, <laughs> wow. Take them all out. Yeah. He was actually friends with John McCain. Maybe he was actually upset about it. And Aretha. I'm not saying don't. I'm not saying don't yeah, go. But no, 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 no. I'm not saying because the thing is, he didn't have to choose one of the. Uh, not, not. As far as I can tell, I don't know what his full schedule right. was. No. You don't know but his they schedule. Weren't, but they weren't the same day. They were a day apart. They were a day you, apart. You take your black okay. ass to both. Well, what, what is Barack Obama doing right now? Chilling. Exactly. What the <laughs> fuck is his job right now? Y'all niggas go to the motherfucking both funerals. You go to Aretha on on Saturday and, and John go, on Sunday, no, or whatever. But, however it goes. But but I Friday I mean, he, and Saturday. He did That's make he statements. Is. He he should have been there, is what you're saying. But he yes. did make a statement <laughs> pertaining to Aretha passing. But I think from a as a political figure and the you know ex president and still he's still my president motherfuckers because <laughs> Trump is not my president I don't give a <laughs> fuck what y'all say well he's still our president no he's not no. I think that as a political figure and the first black president he kind of had to be at this statesman this is not a normal statesman McCain was elevated almost like like a president so he had to be there and show face and what he said was actually very poignant. And was needed to be said to the middle of America, which needs to kind of change their mind. Yeah. Because right now, they they still, they, they're not going to be like, man, I'm glad that Aretha Franklin thing was hop, popping. No, they were like, no, I want to watch McCain and the people that honor McCain. And wait a minute, this head nigger in charge actually showed up and maybe I'll think differently of him. That's my, my, my copple voice. Maybe I'll think different of him. Not- he was good, a good Negro. And that, and that's that you know that that's great. Like I, I I appreciate them showing up to McCain's funeral and and all respect to John McCain because I I actually do respect him. Uh, you know he was a Republican, so I would have never voted for him. But when he ran against Obama, th- there was literally one moment that he earned all of my respect. He was at some town hall and this little old white lady stood up and was like, "But Obama's a Muslim. He's a Muslim." And John McCain immediately was like, "No." You're wrong. He is not a Muslim. That is a rumor. That's bullshit. It's a you know he immediately shut that down. Right. And I absolutely appreciate that. You know it, it's a and fair that, and honest thing. Honestly, to do. and that's the moment he lost. <laughs> it, it, could, it probably could have been. That yeah. is the moment when probably McCain could've been. showed uh, that he could actually that he was be a human being. A human being. When the lady's like, he's a Muslim. I just I can't trust him. And he says, No, we just have a difference of opinion. But he's a he's a he's a great father and he's a good American. Yeah, he's not. As soon as he said that, like he's a good American. As the words came out of his mouth, literally, white people going, I, I am not voting for R- him. Racist erections yeah. fell. <laughs> like, yeah. um, no more hard dick for it. <laughs> Son, bitch. Son both, of a bitch. Both inches just fell. God <laughs> damn. But I'm going to let you know right now, I think that um, the, the fact that Trump showed his ass pertaining to McCain, Trump showed his ass pertaining to this past weekend, mm-hmm. like it, the fact he showed his ass pertaining to Aretha Franklin, and he keeps fucking up, but he's still winning. Well, he's still winning we'll because see. you know we'll what? This happened him. today um, where they basically are trying to ram through uh, a new person for the Supreme Court. Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. Not only that, a person that they really do think is going to try to overturn Roe versus Wade because he has written fucking document after document about, you know, hey, you know, it could happen. And he is on Trump's dick. Like if you look at the side of his head, you can see little Trump dick, dick marks, little on his head. Little, little being the operative yeah, word. Little, very little <laughs> orange. If you look, there's a little orange stains little around dust. his mouth. And so I think that um, <clears throat> he's showing his ass, and I still think he's gonna win. He's still gonna win. I still he's gonna think that they're gonna put this because he might I mean, be in jail. By you then. know what? No, he's not gonna go to jail. He's not going to jail. He, they're he, they're gonna let him slide. They've been letting him slide. Look at all of the fucking horrendous shit he's done. He's done horrendous shit that Obama couldn't have got away with on his best day. If Obama cured cancer, they still be like, "Well, we gotta impeach you." 
This motherfucker's got away with it, and you don't think you don't think that he's gonna keep getting away with it? I absolutely think white people in power want to keep this motherfucker there. Period. Hey, the end. Well, fuck them and their feelings and yeah. their votes. And be you know why I said that? Because this is savage as fuck. This is savage as fuck. Dash on, Radio on Dash Radio. I'm Dash Shang. Comedy. I'm, I'm Black Pedro. Yeah, and you can make sure you check us out. I want to throw this in there too. Um, you can check out Savage as Fuck live. That's right, live. At Levity Live in Oxnard, California, October. No, September. I said October. I got another tomorrow. show. I got another show. Tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. Today's Tuesday. Tomorrow, Wednesday, September 5th at 8 o'clock p.m. Now, if you want to get on the guest list, hit up. Just hit them up, and you can hit us up on Facebook. That's right. Or at, Instagram for me, at Black Instagram, Pedro. Holler at me. Or Jeff, I, I'm, I'm going to spell it right. U-R-R-E-A. Urea. <laughs> That's it, baby. Yeah, we're getting this in, y'all. So you can hit us up, and you will get free, um, free, free tech, free guest list, free guest list. You will get. We will give us free. free. Give us some free. free. You will be free. Um, And also, I want to let you know on on the lineup, we got uh, Denise Carter, we got um, Terrence Washington, and um, we got Robert Zapata. Zapata. So very good show, very strong show, and you will have a great time. And that's an excellent club. So you will have a good time. Come out to the show, Savages Fuck Live, and we're going to be doing more Savages Fuck Live shows all the way till the end of the year. We're going to be setting up a bunch of shows. All of us are going to be on there. And make sure you come out. That's right. Let's go. What? Who? What? Bit.least.shang levity. Bit dot bitly. Bitly dot slash bitly slash shang dot levity. Bitly. Yeah, well, you know, whatever the fuck. Go to the Facebook. Shang levity. <laughs> whatever the no, fuck. Right. Go to Facebook. This is- also, uh, you know what? A it's a, not yeah. a nightmare. Oh, whatever. A night- I hope your show's better than this. Oh God, <laughs> my show. Well, we're, we're fucking up here on the on that part. It's I had good. it down. Just hey, go, but listen. Go to my website, IamShang.com, and it's a link right there. That's How about need. that? Uh, also, <laughs> do this, guys. Uh, call in and talk shit to us if you think we're fucking up or if you love what we're doing. Three one zero nine eight six six six. One zero. I'm sorry. One one. Yeah. Six six one one. Six six one zero. I'm oh, six six one zero. Why do I keep fucking this up? I don't okay. know. I should write it down <laughs> it's somewhere. Nine eight six 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 one zero. Three one zero. Nine eight six 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 one zero. When I was working for, uh, I was doing stuff for Hot ninety seven. They had the phone number. Like this, is how bad all the DJs were. The phone number, and this is years. They had to put the phone number up yeah. there every single time. Yeah, man. of course. Fuck Hot 97, man. Yeah, fuck them. Yo, fuck we doing something different over here. Dash comedy. Dash comedy. All hey, up in uh, your grill. So uh, before we get to this break, guys, I'm going to hit you with another Pedro Ponders. Um, na, na, na. <laughs> just need Pedro some theme music. Ponder. We're working on the theme music. <laughs> yeah, She's yeah. your queen to be. <laughs> He's your P to be. Yeah. Um, so Pedro, listen, guys. Pedro Ponders. This week I'm pondering, uh, are we familiar with the actor Jeffrey Owens, who's a... Uh, Reblown up on the uh, internet this week, this weekend. We are now. Jeffrey Owens, right, was uh, played a little guy named Elvin, a recurring cult, a recurring role on the Cosby Show back yes, in the day. The light skinned dude that was always he in was love. Ma- he was married to uh, Cassandra, I think, the oldest yeah, daughter. Yeah, they had. That's they had her, a, that was her name. Yeah, I think. I think her name was Cassandra. Wasn't the oldest? He daughter? was married to one Sandra, of them. Yeah. That's my name. Oh, Sandra. Was it Sandra? Yeah. Cassandra? Well, either either one of those, right? right? He was married to the oldest Cobbsy daughter who was never on there. <laughs> and uh but he was he was there. So recently somebody recognized him working at a Trader Joe's. Um, I think in Jersey or some shit. Bagging groceries. Ba- or your cashier, maybe. And I think he was bagging. She took a she took a picture and kind of put it out there, like, oh shit, the dude from the Cosby show. <laughs> and now there's kind of been this this dual reaction, right? First, the internet blows up like, holy shit, you know, what happened to your life? You know what I mean? How you, <laughs> <laughs> how you end up bagging groceries at Trader Joe's? Oh, no, right? And then other people have Hopefully co- not just like that. Yeah, no. Oh, that's no. What, everything Why? I read Everything I read sounded just like that. Right? What happened? <laughs> that was the voice that my head had in it. Um, and then another reaction came out where, you know, kind of supportive, where a lot of people celebrities, working actors now, whatever, are coming out with their stories of how they've had to struggle and maintain right. our jobs. And I just kind of wanted to take this opportunity to, to throw my, my hat in the ring on this subject because 19 years in L.A., uh, yes, I've had to do a trillion different fucking things to pay my bills, right? 
yeah. comedy acting it doesn't always pay the thing sometimes a lot of times especially when you first get out here they ask you to do stuff for free and that's just how you get to the next gig is to just right. do this one take it on the chin right so yeah you do that and you might be talented and do the thing but how the fuck do you pay your bills like that right so you don't right. so you got to do something else or you end up sleeping in a bush or in your fucking car or some shit right but i think i wanted to clear up for america out there this perception of hollywood of what making it is, you know what I mean? Of what it means to to make it in the world in general, right? Like, I never came out here really with dreams of being, quote, unquote, famous, right? Like, I don't necessarily need everybody to know my name. Wait a minute, what but a, you did come out here to get these bitches. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> everybody ain't got to know that, though. You know oh, what I'm saying? shit. You could get them on the low, cuz. I'm just saying, man. Yeah, anybody just, ain't got to know my pimping going I'm down. I'm just saying that kiss and grind, you was, you was, I'm saying, you but was definitely. Nigga, you the only one kissing and telling, see? <laughs> see uh, nobody shit. would know that shit. No, but, <laughs> yeah. but No, exactly. Yeah. Plenty but, of hoes <laughs> at Trader Joe's. But this, Trader hoes. <laughs> but no, I continue. You know what I'm saying? I, so, yeah. so, yeah, like, um, you know, I don't, I'm not necessarily looking for the limelight just for the sake of it. Do I want acknowledgement for the things that I do and be properly compensated for them? Absolutely. Absolutely. That'd be nice. But I don't I don't necessarily need to be famous. What I do, what I would like to do, what my dream is, what making it would be to me is to take all of these talents that I have, the, the comedy, acting. Uh, I can do a little song and dance number two. No, I can't sing. But uh, to, take, <laughs> to be able to take all of those talents and just live, right? Earn a living. Buy, buy a house, ha have a wife, have kids that we can feed multiple times a day, send them to good schools and things like that, right? Like just to be able to pay for life, but through this thing that I do, right? So until I can do that, yeah, we all got to hustle and do wow. mad other things. I work at a restaurant, a French restaurant in Beverly Hills. I serve motherfuckers foie gras, <laughs> shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Steak tartare and shit like that. And, wow. then, and then I take my broke ass home, right? And then we go to the comedy club, and then we do that thing, and then we come to Dash, and we do all these things, and we spin a lot of plates, and we keep it moving. But if you see me at that at that restaurant in Beverly Hills with my monkey suit on, with the vest and the fucking tie and all that, don't ever think that I'm out here losing, kid. You know what I'm saying? That's just that moment where I'm earning money a different way, right? Don't ever, yeah, but ever think, America, but that you see somebody out here doing a side hustle, that they're failing at their main hustle, right? Because the, the success comes in your ability to put all that ego aside and to just be able to achieve in whatever way you, you But can. that's why I said um, when I stopped selling drugs, <laughs> I'm, fucking, <laughs> I'm fucking around. And my, no, my brother's keeper. I, and I, what I did was when I, I, me and Nino Brown were talking, and I told Nino, uh, nigga, we got to get this money. <laughs> no, no I, honestly, I, I agree with you, but I think that the, the fact that they made it go viral, and then now there's like memes of him saying, don't hate a man for working to feed his family. Come on. I, I've been lucky. Not you put things in perspective for me just now because I was very depressed this morning, um, and uh, because I have only had to work, and I bullshit you not since I've been out here, a week. I drove I drove Lyft for one week. I made fourteen hundred dollars though. There you go, which is crazy. But I drove Lyft for one week. I pretty much have made a living just paying my bills doing Through stand up. Comedy. Yeah. Just doing stand up. But there's a lot of people that don't understand that. And we so we we've had these conversations yeah. a million times. And you'll be like, man, these comics keep coming up to me like, I wish I could how'd I get that gay? How'd I get that gay? And you're trying to get to another level, right? Right. But at the same time, I know sometimes I'll remind you, like, but you gotta understand, like, the amount of work you get on the road in clubs, theaters, like, it's damn near impossible for most comics to do that. Like the majority of comedians in America cannot do that like it's it's really really hard to do so it is a blessing right. in that you're able to to earn in that way like it's absolutely amazing one of the things that i had to get over and that was frustrating in the world of comedy and i think it's very specific to comedy right in that there are opportunities to perform almost nightly versus like music or acting or something like that right where right. you can't actors don't get that same opportunity yeah you can't as stand-ups i don't think they do yeah you can't frequently get up there that's why act some actors float into stand-up to try and get more exposure right even right. though they're not really a stand-up um but in the world of stand-up comedy uh one of the things i had to get over is you know this big adage that is part of our our industry that 
if you're not doing this full time, then you're not a real stand up comedian, like a quote unquote real stand up. Oh, comedy. that's bullshit. And it's just you know, it. no, that's bullshit. Who yeah. said that? Eat I mean, a, or a bunch eat, of I mean, eat a bag of dicks. Between comics, it, it gets thrown out there like that, and you know, you know, cats lie. You know, they'll be like, oh yeah, man, I don't, this is all I do. Blah blah blah. It's like, well, if this is all you do, then you're about two weeks away from being homeless, though. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, I see what I see you out there, so you got to be doing something else in the meantime. Um, but there is that stigma that if you weren't doing this full time and even people outside of the industry, when you tell them you're a stand up comic and they don't know you or whatever, like I get the question all the time. Well, is that all you do? You yeah. know, it's like that, that questioning of it. Like, well, are you really doing it? If you have to do something else, it, you know, you can hear it in their voice right? and that shit can eat away at your ego and cause you to be depressed and all that other shit. But my depression is cause of drugs. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> You, no, you're, no, not, you're not doing enough. I'm not doing <laughs> enough drugs. Yeah. No, yeah. it's not drugs. I, I just I know we got to do a break, but I just think that you're right. And I, I thought it was I was more on the side of well, dude got to make a living. Of course, you know. And I, I but I saw a lot of people attacking, a lot of people dissing, a lot of people saying, "Oh, you ain't shit." I mean, I think you I know? think that, the, and it was mostly black folks, which made me sad. I think that the the first person who put him out there like that is, is you know it's kind of wrong for that, like. Like, cause they put it in the light of like he's failed or like that he hadn't, you know, that they're disappointed to see this old person that they used to see on TV now doing this other thing, and it's just like, yo, mind your fucking business. Like, why, why would you put him <laughs> on fucking? Was, what if that's his dream? <laughs> yeah, oh, mean, that's fucked up. <laughs> no, that was fucked up. It that wasn't be. his dream. Like, no, it, but you the, know, the man is a. He the just man got is, hired. He's he just, a, yeah, and that's the other thing. Yeah, Tyler Perry sees all this and offered him a gig. So. Yeah. The karma for being exposed like that and getting clowned away. But, you know, he's he's back on the scene. You know now, who, so. else, who else did that? He's a, and one and one. Yeah, one. All I, press is good press. Yeah. <laughs> he's moved up to an aisle check. <laughs> yeah, thank, I'd like to thank him for getting me up to aisle check. It's fucked up. But, no, uh, th- that was bagging groceries and then went and won a Super Bowl uh, uh, for the Rams. Oh, Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner yeah, yeah, was definitely. bagging groceries and then got back into it and won a Super Bowl. Yeah, you see, I mean, you see stories like that all the time. He's, he, Morgan Freeman didn't get his first real acting gig until he was like 52 or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, and this is real talk. Like, this is the truth. That's the truth. You got to persevere through through a lot of this stuff to really. So for all the people out there who are middle America or not really involved in this stuff, and you just see the thing on TV and you see the person and you're like, oh, they made it. Why can't you make it with a like that person probably took way more years to get on than you have any idea. So anybody that you see that's on right now has probably been doing it way. There's no such thing as overnight successes. Kevin Hart. Yeah. Like people think, oh, he just blew up out of nowhere. No, Kevin was doing this for decades. Tiffany before. Haddish was doing it for a very, very long same time. Same thing. So like, yeah, we, we, we're all out here grinding and making it honestly is just your ability to keep getting up every day and going to do it no matter how. This industry comes at you guys. That is my time for Pedro Ponders. Pedro Ponder on Savage as Fuck on Dash Radio, Dash Comedy. I am Black Pedro. You are. Uh, yo, this is Shang, and we will be back. We're gonna take a little break. We're gonna listen to some music, and we'll be back to get into these other topics. And when we cover the topics we covered was Donald Putin, um, how he's still fucking up and doing crazy shit. That's right. Um, yo, Nike came with it. With one of the best ads I've ever seen for Kaepernick. Cat and back. I appreciate Cat back. And uh, we also talked about the fact that never, you never know how long it took somebody to make it, but <laughs> you know what? But they, when they do, when they do, That's, they went through a lot of you shit. No, they earned it. Yeah, yeah, know that they earned it, y'all. Mind your business. My, and my, and That's fuck it. your feelings That's and mind all. your business. Don't be. Listen, when you see me working at a restaurant, don't say shit. Tweet to my me. shit and see how many feet you get in your ass at once. <laughs> Damn, it'll be two. Black Pedro, I, like I, I only have two. So Pedro it'll be two. decided for revenge. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, this is savage as fuck. We're going on break. We'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yo, I'm sorry that we that we all had a bowel movement just now. Yo, what's <laughs> up? This is Savage as Fuck on Dash Radio. I'm Shang. I'm Black Pedro. And I'm gonna tell you something right now. Some of the things that we just covered, I want to say that they are very good topics. I wanted to make sure I reiterate the shit about the Supreme Court is very important for all you women that are listening. Because there's a very good chance they're going to be rolling back a lot of shit pertaining to women's rights. So, make sure you get out there and vote. Also, if you're going to vote, you might as well do this too. Follow us on all, yeah. Yeah, on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram, minus Comedian Shang. I'm at Black Pedro. At Black Pedro. Yeah. And you can hit up Black Pedro on his DM to get free Tickets. passes to any of our Savages Fuck live shows. Our next one being tomorrow night, Wednesday, uh, September 5th. 
Yes, September 5th. In at, Oxnard. In Oxnard, California at Levity Live. Levity Live. It's yeah. going to be a very good show. And there's a very good comics on the show. So make sure you come out and check that out. Also, you can actually download the app. Download the app. That's right. Yes. You can download the app. And if you have a GMC car... You G- can, GM, GM, not, not uh, even GMC, like GM, like GM, all, just, all of their all brands. GM car. Yeah, yeah. God damn, so G- that's like Chevy. I, all wow, the GMs. Uh, so yeah. that's gangster. So I'm gonna tell Cadillac, you. all of that. Cadillac, yeah, of course, Cadillac. You from Detroit. In the back. Um, so make sure that you download the app so you can listen to us. You can listen to us live. Dash from, Radio, uh, but up uh, Dash Radio, but is the app? Yeah, the Dash Radio is the app, but make sure you listen to us on Dash. Comedy. Yeah. That's the channel. That's the channel. That's it, y'all. Uh, also, also Facebook us. That's right. Follow us, us on, on Facebook. Facebook. Oh, and on iTunes. Make sure you rate us, okay? We need we need five stars. We six, got five seven, stars. eight, nineteen stars. Like, we got five from, stars. So make sure you make sure you keep that five star rating for us. Yeah, guys. we got to keep that rating up. And I'm gonna also let you know when you get a chance, tell your friends, 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 friends to listen to us all the time. Don't miss a don't miss a week, or you will get herpes. Yeah, um, you will. That's what I heard. Uh huh. Um, in your eyes. In your eyes. Which eye is herpes. The worst. Three to five p.m. Yep, you can listen to That's us. That's every Tuesday, y'all. And then you can re-listen to us on a uh, on Instagram. I mean on no <laughs> on iTunes. <laughs> Not on Instagram. No <laughs> iTunes, damn. Google Play, Stitcher. No. And but you can re-listen to us on Dash. Um, is I it, don't. I don't. I don't even think we have the re-air dates. Uh, no, not the we same. do. Cassie, are they the same? The re-air dates? Yes. Because they last week it was, it was different, but it's all good. Don't worry about that. They can definitely follow us the following Monday on iTunes, on Stitcher, on, on Google Play. And you can, for sure. And you, you were just watching us on Facebook Live, so you can watch us on yeah, Facebook Live. Yeah, that's why Live you got to follow us on Facebook. You got to follow us on Facebook so you can see Facebook Live. You can see that why Pedro gets all the ladies, and I get women that want me to be their buddy. Hey, that's yeah. so good. Everybody like, needs friends. Well, you're a good friend, though. Everybody needs friends. Somebody gonna get it eventually. I've been, I got so much dick that that I've been like holding back because I ain't been with nobody. Whenever I hit it, whoever I hit, you gonna get it. I All right, mean, ladies. So if you would like to be uh, <laughs> paralyzed from the waist down by Shane's yeah, dick, eventually, make somebody. sure make sure you call in three one zero nine eight six 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 one zero. That's three one zero nine eight six. Six six one zero. We are savage as fuck on that Dash was, Comedy that Dash was a Radio. Savage as fuck response. Just, if you want to be paralyzed <laughs> from the waist down, from ladies. the waist down, ladies, you like, will still have the use of your arms and other appendages, but no. your, your feet will be dead. No, I I don't think I got. Yeah, I ain't got that type of dick. That's a hey. that's the dick of death right there, boy. Hey, but well, uh, you know, speaking of dicks, uh, uh, Steve Bannon. Well, yeah, I, I mean, as dicks go. Former uh, Trump uh, chief of staff, right? He, if you if you work for Trump, especially in that capacity, you're pretty much a dick. Yeah, he's a flat out. He's always been a, um, a flat out yeah. racist. Um, um, so I, I'm not quite sure what they were thinking. Maybe you know, maybe some balance or parody or whatever. But uh, the New Yorker. Uh, so they have a festival every October, right? In in New York. And uh, somehow they thought it a good idea to invite Steve Bannon as the, the headliner of the festival, which immediately sparked, you know, well, pullouts from people like Judd Apatow, Jim Carrey and other celebrities who are like, oh, he can he can be there and he can say what he want to say. But I ain't going to be there. I'm not, not on the same stage with me. You know what I mean? And um, now what is the festival? I mean. Uh, I'm not it's even not sure. It's not a like, comedy festival. John, John Mulaney, uh, everybody they mentioned is in comedy. Yeah, Just Steve John Bannon Mul- ain't the funniest dude. John Mulaney I mean. pulled out, uh, Patton Oswalt as well. Um, but yeah, so obviously none of these people want. That is the comedy. It's the New York Comedy Festival. Yeah. That's the only thing I can think of. And they don't, oh, yeah. don't want to, yeah, so they're not going to be a part of, and, and you know, Bannon was going to be interviewed by somebody and, you know, kind of a Q&A Damn, type thing. They took a huge hit losing all those heavy hitter comics. Well, well, they, they've now announced that they're not going to bring Bannon. So, no shit. So, right. <laughs> so apparently they'll be able to get all those people back. I just thought it was, um, A, interesting, the choice to bring him on. Um, but also, like, you know, some of the right wing response is always when left wingers protest against, you know, Trump president. Right presence or something like that they're like well you just don't want to hear the truth or you just don't want to hear both sides you don't want to hear what's fair and it's like uh no no like i'm not trying to shut this dude up 
you know, you don't you don't like free speech is what they'll always throw Go out. Go right? do your like, free speech somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, no, like or you can speak here. I'm not gonna show up and listen to it though. Right. And, I and have the, yeah. That's a, that's different than trying to censor somebody, right? That's that's well, exercising your choice as an American to not listen to what you consider to be monkey nut bullshit. <laughs> you know, wow. backwards, I mean, it is, it is, no, but I, I get what they were doing. They might have done it for the controversy to have somebody from the uh, left interview this very right wing person, and then you know, like like if John Stewart would have interviewed him, he would have he'd have took it to the face. Right. But what I'm saying is. I, I think when the right says, oh, well, you're, you know, you're trying to shut down our freedom of speech. I think that they keep forgetting, well, there's consequences for your freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. All right. And the consequences are I ain't fucking with you. That's why they get all sensitive. It's like, right. OK, fine. You can you can stand on the corner. And, yeah, I hate black babies. Black babies. I hate them. They're right. always trying to mess up and they're taking our jobs. <clears throat> all those black babies are taking our jobs. You can do that shit all you want. I don't know why we keep doing this other voice for dumb people. <laughs> but that is the standard. Because mm, Southern people, a mm, little, well, little bit. I'm, I'm going to do it because uh, a couple of years ago, the state of Texas uh, changed the history books, basically. And they changed the um, the Civil War to be about something called, uh, first, states' rights, then sectionalism, and then third, slavery. Slavery. Which is so yeah, so well, <laughs> that's I guess, how they gonna talk about. So I guess we can keep doing the dumb people, dumb voice thing. So yeah, if you want to be down south and change the history like that to ignore what We're really happened in this country, you. then y'all yeah. gonna say fuck you and make fun of your shit. Yeah, but I mean, I, I understand what they did with Steve Bannon, but I don't know why they would do it for a comedy festival because I think that's the comedy festival. I'm pretty about 99 percent sure that's the comedy festival that they do in New York. But the bottom line is, I can see what they were doing, but sometimes when you do shit like that, it don't work. Yeah. Like right now, there's a lot of people that are putting controversial figures out there. And then they get a backlash, like, and then they're yeah. surprised. So, so the 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 editor the, uh, of the New Yorker, David Remnick, uh, you know, he, he defended himself by saying that you know they weren't going to allow Bannon to jump on and off the record. He said, "I have every intention of asking him difficult questions and engaging him and engaging in a serious and even combative conversation." So, um, and well, then obviously he, it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it, was it wasn't be. in support of him. Yeah, I mean, they weren't championing him. Like, I see what they were trying to do. Right. Um, almost expose him. He says the audience itself, by his presence, puts a curtain, a certain pressure on a conservative that an interview alone doesn't do. So, yeah, I mean, this could have done some things to, good. It been to a good expose thing. some things. Right. However, I, I do kind of see that, you know, Bannon has been one of those voices of, of hate. Yeah. Prejudice, bigotry, Breitbart, yeah, yeah, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. So, you, know, I can also s see those reactions this, that don't want to share a stage with him. Other than the fact that the comedy festival usually is littered with all white comics, let's keep it real because I really do. I mean, it, they need to. If anything, y'all need to get your <laughs> shit together <laughs> and start hiring more because there are funny black comics that can be funny in front of white people. I'm one of them, and, and you're be, one of them. Be intelligent about exactly, politics. And exactly. Every other thing. So, I mean, they need. I, it kills me where people are like, "Well, I'm not gonna show up." Well, why don't you uh, get your diversity together? And I'm, it's not like I'm asking. There's comics that are asking for a hand in. I'm talking about really strong comics, Finesse Mitchell, and on and on and on. We can name comics that can do those crowds and do good. But I mean. I think that right now the problem I have is when white people feel like it's reverse racism, I start laughing at them. Like, yo, you have no fucking idea of the shit that we oh. deal with compared to the shit you deal with. There's no such thing as reverse There's no, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so Racism is just racism. It's See, racism is racism, but the bottom line is <clears throat> it is different racism. It's different with black white people being racist to black people because you are affecting the rest of our fucking lives, our livelihood, our children, and everything else. I could just not like white people, and it don't mean shit, nothing. It don't yeah, mean I mean, shit to that, the white people. That would, that would be... Being bigoted or prejudiced, yeah. where you just don't and like. I'm not. I, but being racist is when you act actively do something to hold yeah. somebody back based on that dis discrimination or bigotry. So typically in our country historically, black people haven't been in a position of power to hold white right. people back, like from education or housing or anything like that. So um, you know that that's, right that's now, why that goes and right that now. Way. Eminem is beefing with uh, you know. Uh, we we're gonna get into that at the <laughs> so, end. Too. So, so we, we, it's we white got, rapper against white rapper. We got, now, em, so we got I, Eminem coming up. Yeah. Trust me. Uh, right here on Savages Fuck on Dash Comedy on Dash Radio. Yes, it's your boy Shane. This is Shane. I'm Black Pedro, man. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just uh, I just thought it was you know funny how people kind of reacted to to Bannon's uh, booking there. Um, that kind of 
kind of blew up, went up in smoke. Well, I'm I'm glad I'm glad people are conscientious enough to be like, oh, I'm not going to be part of it. But I would have liked to see him get roasted. I would have liked to see him come up there and just, you know, just yoga is flame. Yeah, yeah, it's like just go up there and just start smashing him. Like, yeah, well, well what about the fact your finger smells like your daughter's pussy? Oh Ew. shit! Oh shit! And then he run off the stage and then kill himself. Like, <laughs> I just like I want some one of these dudes to get interviewed and something exposed to the point where you go to their house and they're hanging from a door. I just, <laughs> just really do, and I don't mean like in Robin Williams' way because he was doing that from another. I'm talking about just straight up, like you. Said hanging from a fan, and ceiling fan, and just ceiling fan, just get kicked in the face with them feet, boy. Uh, so yeah, that that booking kind of went up in smoke. You know, something else went up in smoke. Uh, the largest history museum in all of Latin America. Yeah, in, they lost. Uh, uh, they said they they lost billions. They lost two, like twenty million artifacts uh, from uh, the National Museum in in Rio. Uh, it's like over two hundred years old. It used to be the. Uh, the house, the palace for the Portuguese royal family. Yeah, but um, I mean, but do they think it was um, some pyro? That's it. Uh, was it ars- arson? arsonistic? Uh, or was it just you know they had a whole bunch of old paintings and they should have put <clears throat> they shouldn't have put the lighter fluid next to the old paintings. <laughs> like it just <laughs> while while, uh, uh, while, while Enrique while, was on a smoke yeah, break and yeah, shit. It's like, hey man, why? Oh shit, it's fire! Hey man, well. Oh, see that's racist. That's saying they all sound like that. Why do we keep doing that? I don't know. But they I'm think good all, at it. Yeah, that's true. I'm just good at it. But they always think, and it's all, not racist. We're not holding them back. That's true. But it's not like, like I haven't heard them say that black people talk like, yeah, you know what I mean, motherfucker. Oh please, <laughs> everybody's making money off a of black voice nowadays. So, yeah, so <laughs> exactly. On. So whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah, hey, no. well, I can't believe I burned up the whole museum. But man, this can't would say be, that. This would this would literally be like if the Smithsonian burned down or some shit, right? Like, yeah, it's like na- the national artifacts from like. Hundreds from centuries, bro. Well, it's not. You know what though? I, I, I I'm a person that kind of hates the past. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds weird. Like I don't like. I don't like. Even like I gave props to Aretha Franklin. I gave props to like the people before me. But I really do like the shit that's going to be instead of the shit that was. So I've never been had an affinity to to museums. I go. Ah, I, I I get it. You know, we we got to spend. I think the majority of our time looking forward. If you forward. get if you get caught up in the past, it, it can hold you back. However, however, there is there they is did that, lose billions of dollars, and there there is that adage though that those who do not know history are doomed to repeat it. Right, so we do need to have certain understandings of our history and of our past so that we uh, can evolve, change, grow as a, or, as societies, and become better people. Or or we build robots that we can fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's that, what but, I want to. But that should for. that should be based. Why not both? That should be based. No, no. Off, that should be Just based robot. off the wooden robots that we used to build. Right? Yeah, and I used to. Now those yeah, once you once you get enough robots. splinters in your dick, yes. then you realize, oh shit, we Museums could build brother robots. robots. I just fuck. think that right now. I want to go to the future and I want to amuse them with like the show, the transition of the robots we used to fuck and the ones we're gonna fuck. <laughs> A right? museum that's of what, robots. <laughs> that's all I want in my life. So when I heard about this, I went, oh, that's really sad, but why ain't they building robots I can fuck? The fuckbot Smithsonian? Yeah, that's a, <laughs> the fuckbot Smithsonian. That'd be awesome. Yeah, man. I don't this, know where that came from with me, but that's what I've been feeling lately. Um, but, you know, <laughs> pe- people in, in Brazil, they're, they're, they're mad. They're upset. So it, it's one of those situations where, yes, the building was dilapidated and, you know, needed needed much help and renovation and was probably neglected. So yeah. we don't know the cause of the fire yet, but, you know, in situations like that, yeah, it probably was some wire that went and caught right. onto some thing and then the bucket of the toluene <laughs> went up and then that shit caught fire and, I, and the shit all burned down. So people are in the streets. They're, like, storming the fucking palace museum place and, and the police have had to open up tear gas on their ass to back them off. But you know, people are upset. They've been asking for it to be you know what? rebuilt it, for years. I just I, I feel like people get upset about shit like that and they step over like that's like people who step over that that homeless person that's hungry to go into Subway. It's like like I know I'm not the richest dude, but I actually still give money to people that are or, or food or whatever. And I just think the priorities is like, oh, man, this old painting that just sat there and didn't really change anybody's life. Oh, but what about this kid that's fucking dying? Or what about this? You don't want to put money into that. So I'm one of those people torn when it comes to that. I'm like, yo, yeah, I get it. Y'all are upset. But get upset about some of the fucking ghettos in Brazil. 
You know I'm what sure. I'm, I'm sure they are. I'm sure mm. they are. And I, I'm one of those people. As long as I have like four fucking jobs, I'm gonna keep stepping over homeless motherfuckers. <laughs> like <laughs> when I'm rich and just making money off jokes, then then I'll start passing around uh, you know trinkets and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that was cold as fuck. Like yeah, for now, and fuck we, you, hey, homeless man, person. I don't die. They be like, you got any extra money? I'm like, nigga, what is extra money? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. The yeah, fuck yeah. is yeah. extra? Like <laughs> a money I don't need yeah. that yeah. I can't use just that I can't extra. find anything to do with. Mm-hmm. Like fuck. Out of here. So, yeah, but I felt bad. Some lady, uh, when I was driving up here, I stopped, and she's like, hey, can you give me money for food? And I didn't have any change or anything. I just had a card. I said, unless I can swipe it between your titties, baby. Nah. I, can't, I can't give you nothing. She's like, oh, okay. And then she I, pulled I out I, a square. Yeah, then, <laughs> then, she, then she pulled out a wad of money. I can give you some change, though. Because, I mean, I'm not, doing, I think I'm not doing well enough to give that, but I feel like that dollar I gave is enough to... Maybe at least feed them for a minute or buy them drugs. Either way, they're happy. Yeah, no, I get it. I mean, you know, a, a society and I feel like Brazil is a is a country with enough productivity and export that they could be distributing their wealth. I, I, I'm not fully hipped on their economics, but they could be distributing their wealth a little bit better because those those farfalas that I've or farvelas that I've seen are fucked up. Duh. Like, Coming from the east side of Detroit, if I say your neighborhood is fucked up, bro, trust me, it's your shit fucked is up. fucked up. So, um, but but seemingly, you shouldn't have to make a choice between maintaining national treasures like centuries worth of your country's history and and Latin America's history uh, for maintaining, you know, Just let it, your poor else populations. Watch it, you know, like. Like you but should be able to take else. care of the homeless and the museum. You know what I mean? Amen. Have the homeless people take care of the museum. Yeah. <laughs> Pay them to clean it up and maintain it. Like one it. of them wouldn't steal one of those paintings. Senator. I know I would. If I was hungry, fuck that. I'm taking this painting of this old bitch that's not alive no more. And I'm gonna <laughs> sell it and I'm gonna get me a palace too. I just feel like I feel like I get what you're saying and everybody's upset. And if there's any people from Brazil that think it's fucked up, what I'm saying is you need to take care of your people more, motherfuckers. You know, fuck that museum. That's right. Fuck them feelings. No, no, I, I don't say fuck that museum. No, it's it's a, it's a fucked up oh thing. Oh like, my like, god! No, 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 it's, it's that a, shit. It'd be like if this if the Smithsonian burned down. Fuck the like, Smithsonian too. But and first of all, I'd be pissed because they just opened up an African American section. So I'd be like, well, ain't that a coincidence? Uh, yeah, <laughs> whole thing burned down on Black Day, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Did so, you say Black Day? <laughs> yeah. It's fucked up that it's Black Day. Hey, where there's smoke, there's yeah. fire. Um, man. But no, I just, I just, I, I don't feel like all I old bullshit and all that the constitution is full of shit to me the shit was written when we had muskets hmm. why are we still like it's the constitution and the second amendment and all fuck all that yeah. we need to write a new one that applies to the world today we didn't have the internet i couldn't see a motherfucker on my phone across the world then <laughs> it's a different world so to, to be dealing with these old these old white people that still at the time were calling indian savages they were, at the time they were still calling them savages, and black people were only uh, like uh, 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 Senator Booker was saying, like, why should I say um, you know Constitution when you didn't even consider me uh, you know a, a full man? So I, you know, so it's like fuck all that old shit, and that's how I see museums. Listen, fuck all that old shit. I want the, the shit now. You can learn from the past and get that shit from the past, but right now I need you to fix the shit while I'm breathing now before I'm out of here. Well, that's what they can't learn from it now though. What they can't. What? The Vatican. The Vatican. They can't, they can't. And fuck the Vatican. They well, and because they definitely fucking kids. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm nobody gives a shit about them. But but I'm saying nobody in Brazil can learn from shit from this museum now, ex- <laughs> except how how fires are prevented. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's about that's all about all they're gonna get from this. But speaking of fire, who? Speaking of fire, boy. Well, it's the return of El Gringo. Well, Eminem. And that, yeah, for those who don't know, I'm not talking about a tropical storm called El Gringo. Uh, I am talking about that boy from yeah. Detroit. My soulmate. <laughs> Your soulmate? Marshall Mathers is his name, guys. Uh, Eminem is back. He dropped a new album. Oh man, his his shit is called. Is it good? Kamikaze, bro. Let that- me tell you something. I took a I took a double listen through last night. Went through it twice. <laughs> Bro, this shit is fire. First of all, first of all, he is going at everybody. 
I like, think he's going he to Yellow Wolf. He don't give a fuck about number. Like, he's going at the entire mumble rap nation. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, he threw out a couple of names, but really, he's just clowning the entire phenomenon. I love he, him so he, much. He, rhy- he, rhymes in, he rhymes in their cadence and kills it, right? Oh like, I don't even God. know why anybody does this shit. You know what I mean? Like, just killing it in their mumble rap cadence. Uh, clowns them for all the lean and syrup and all the bullshit cough drinks they drink and shit. Yeah. Um, and, you know, basically he just calls all this new shit but re- how, retarded. But, it, but is it hot, though? Man, I'm talking but about is it hot? fire. More okay. fire. Rar, J. Cole, boom, boom. J. Cole got a, a song where he's freestyle called Freestyle. and he's Well, you don't know he freestyled it. No, I'm saying it's called. <laughs> <laughs> he got to beat it. He, he got to beat it. I, I wasn't there. But I'm just saying, Eminem, no, Eminem's always been one of the best MCs. And I can't believe people, even other rappers are like, why are you coming at Eminem? You know he's going to beat you know, mm-hmm. beat you down with just word after word. Yeah, and I, I haven't Yellow heard, Wolf. It's, it's no, Yellow, MGK it, is the dude's name. I don't uh, know. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah, Machine Gun Kelly. Okay, so. Machine Gun and Kelly. And I don't know. I haven't heard his response. Apparently, I heard, I, I MGK heard has a has a, a clip of it. A, a thing come, a shot back that they're supposed to be yeah, fire. but. But I mean, this, Eminem's a battle rapper. This, I mean, Eminem's just an MC, dog. Like, he, no, he's a he. Would, but he, he no, could do he, all. He yeah, well, that's how he came up he, in he Detroit. He came up yeah. as a battle rapper, and a lot of battle rappers at the uh, hip hop shop that usually can't make good songs because that's the truth. I know a lot of battle rappers, and they, they when they make a song, it's fucking garbage. Eminem's one of the only ones I know that you know really you know brought it. And I'm I'm hoping I haven't heard the album, but I'm hoping that it's good. But I'm gonna tell you right now. His, a couple of his songs, the last couple albums, man, he has some garbage ass songs. Well, that's okay. So that that's one thing he really addresses, and it's you can see garbage. it. You, but Eminem. you could see, but that's fine. You could see that he came back from that. He took from that all the criticisms and 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 focused it into something that is greater than almost anything he's ever done. Like he is really really focused on that. I don't know what this buzz is in the background. African drummers or some shit. <laughs> singa, singanya, baba, <laughs> yeah. chihuahua. Dash radio. That's dash radio. <laughs> but listen, guys, um, this from the from the jump from track number one is called the ringer. He is just getting at cats. He has a song in which he just kind of fully explains. It's almost sad, but he fully explains like why D twelve. Like he, literally, the last long line of the song is "Sorry, y'all, but D twelve is over." Like wow. he, he just goes through the whole thing like. Why that never really popped off, or you know what I mean, like and only got to a certain point. Basically, after Proof died, he said the shit, the shit died. Like the energy, Proof was it. He was the glue to the thing, and he, he's like, I'm not the dude that can carry all these motherfuckers through the rest of their career. Like I'm sorry, but that's not me. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's, and, but it's all deep. Of them were it's dope, honest. Though. It's deep. Uh, it's honest. It, but true. you can't say that because all the MCs on D12 were fucking fire. Not all, all of, them. of them. Who? Not all of them. Who? Oh, who wasn't? Obi Trice was nice. Uh, <laughs> proof, proof obviously has skills, um, but but who, oh the weird the, the weird the big big dude, big yeah, dude. He, like, was he was weird. just he was kind of goofy and jokes like he was yeah. jokes but like I wouldn't put him no in I'm a, thinking of something else not D12 what's the other crew he had uh, oh you talking about um all of them were fire slaughterhouse slaughterhouse yeah, was yeah, fire yeah, yeah. yeah my bad that was my mistake I confused <laughs> my rap rappers uh, D12 <laughs> did have some suspect ass motherfuckers but slaughterhouse was fire. And uh, M-, M also has a, a track on there where he like he fully goes at other w- white rappers too, like you know, g- kind of addresses the idea that like he only blew up because he was right white. But then he's like, um, he's like, well, then why haven't un- any of these other white rappers sold like me, right? You know, so he's calling out all of that shit. But it- it's it's fun. It's like I feel like he's back to that first second album, like real anger, like like not. You know my my pills, <laughs> my pill balance is off, or you know but the media. No, is, machine- it's more like he he is he is back to that chip on his shoulder of mom spaghetti. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like motherfuckers clowning him at well, the at the shelter and shit, and he and he's like, nah, fuck that. Well, that's how, that. that's how I feel comedy wise because I just did a set when we just uh, were at the um, comedy dojo, and I, that's how I felt. Uh, you feel like Eminem. No, I felt like I, I'm back to the chip on my shoulder dum, dum, on stage. Dum, 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 but when I came on stage, I was like, I want to say some of the shit I'm really feeling and I'm thinking. And a lot of times I'll write jokes, so I go, okay, industry will like this. But instead no of just, Pfeiffer. Huh? But there's no Mackay Pfeiffer. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and the, but his dreads look realistic. Hilarious. And the, <laughs> no, I'm just saying, I'm just, I feel like you got to kind of have that energy. 
And but I don't know if that's gonna make it sell though. I mean, but Eminem will sell because it's Eminem. But I'm just saying, he did a couple that didn't. I thought it wasn't good. So there's there's a skit on there that's really funny. Something else I appreciate. You know, skits went away for so long. Right. It'd be back in the '90s. The skits were a big part of hip hop. You could sit there and laugh at an album too, right? Um, but he has this one called Paul. Uh, maybe it's his attorney, Paul Rosenberg, some shit. Maybe a music exec or whatever. But the, 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 it's just like a, a voicemail, and he's just like. So, so what are you going to do? You're just going to make an album where you respond to everything that everybody says? I mean, come on. What's Kamikaze 2 going to be? The response to the response of everything that you responded to? I mean, come on. This <laughs> is pretty funny. But, yeah, he you could tell, like, he, he shouldered some of this. He took some of these these criticisms of his last few albums to heart. Like, they that really hurt him. And, that people no, were like, it, he fell he off. Some, no, he had some fire shit because Rap God was, was bananas. But I'm just saying, man, some of it I just thought, what the fuck's he doing? No, but So I got to hear it, man. What, what, it. Whatever he's been doing, I'm going to tell you right now. Machine Gun Kelly did come at him hard, though. See, I haven't I haven't heard that, and yeah. I want he to He starts talking about that. him, talking about his daughter, talking about all kind of shit. Yeah, and said his daughter's hot, and she's fuckable. Ah. And that's uh, why, Machine and that's Gun why, Kelly that's said why that? Eminem go, went at him, because Machine Gun Kelly said, yo, uh, your that's daughter, what, that's, okay, so your that's what daughter that line is fucking hot, man. Your daughter could get this dick. Yeah, okay, and so that's what... So M does have That's a line. how I feel about Gerard if he had a daughter. <laughs> M- Gerard had a daughter, your daughter could get this dick. <laughs> Eminem had that uh he does have a line addressing that. Yeah. Uh, about that's my nemesis right now for some reason. I feel like I got like in, like in my in the comedy at least, community. At least say his name right though. <laughs> Ger- Gerard. <laughs> Gerard. I mean, it's kind I'd of like it. to call out Gerard. <laughs> Ger- Gerard. Almost funnier Jared than Jared from, yeah, from Subway. It's, it's funnier that I don't, but no. Like some people have comedy nemesis and I hate the fact it's a black comic and cuz I'm racist apparently. That's <laughs> yeah. what everybody's saying cuz if I bring out something about race then I'm racist. There you go. Like if I tell you stop putting your foot on my ne- my neck then I'm oh you you hate uh, cops. Um but I'm just saying like I think that you do need somebody to put a fire into your ass and maybe Machine Gun Kelly cuz he does go hard. And Machine Gun Kelly can rhyme. Okay, yeah. That yeah. motherfucker can go. I think that the <laughs> fact that people like that put a fire in his ass and he did somebody else I heard on there that from the mumble rap community that he went in on. He threw a, he threw a little shot at Yachty. Yeah, uh, I think he mentioned a couple other names. Yeah, but but yeah. Uh, to be honest, in my opinion, he he really just clowned the the phenomenon that was he right that, though that genre. Yeah, of course. I mean, I got a few of those mumble songs. Like I got like two Yachty songs that I bop I bob my head to or whatever. But you do. I, I mean, yeah, because sometimes the beat, oh the, my little, God. the little beats be catchy, man. Oh, come on. I, if I hear that song. We on. No, come on. We on. No, that, if that, that, that song, I hate these motherfuckers. Migos. And I wish, like, Joe Button was going to fight Migos. I'll fight y'all. I'll fight y'all, like, no, literally Eminem, one at a time. Now, Eminem, fuck it together. Eminem on the, on the album, I think at some point he really goes, Brain Dread. Drop top, <laughs> like Br- yeah. Brendan. Drop top, like he's a, he clown, he clowns, yeah, like yeah, he the, clowns everybody. They deserve it. All of his albums have always been clowning people, like but not oh, yeah, like he this. Gets it every- yeah, right. I but this it. is like an entire, like he's he's gone at individuals, but now he has like an entire subgenre of rap to to yeah, fucking that, clown. That, I just think that some of it's horrible. Walk it like I talk it. Hey. Walk it like I talk it. That's what? the dumbest fucking song, <laughs> and you know, you know, plug talk. It's like they're <laughs> fucking dummies to me. But if you do retards. actually, if you do actually walk it like you talk it, I mean, yeah, I what, never what thought pe- about what it. What like can people that. actually say to you? Yeah, I, I do like that. Um, so th- this feels like a, a more of a classic hip hop beef, where it could it could actually inspire like. Uh, you know, cannabis and LL type shit, or yeah. Ice Cube and but, Common type shit, where it's like, okay, cats are going at each other. Nobody's necessarily about to die in the streets over it, but also really great music is being produced in the process. I mean, it was unfortunate between Biggie and Pac, but like, and Who Shot You wasn't really even about Pac, but like, right. when you put that against Hit 'em Up, like, that's just like some, uh, yeah, like, that's some classic shit. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> that shit went way too far, but what I'm saying is, <laughs> What I'm yeah, saying is, you think? What, what I'm saying is, example. though, that we do. That's a horrible example. We, no, no, no. But we're getting to a point where great music like, is made over beef. Like, yeah, but that was. What are you trying that, to say, Pedro? Yeah. That we niggas need to die to get these Grammys going, son. <laughs> Pedro's Yo, fuck is you doing out in these streets if you ain't bleeding, dog? 
Pig, no, you can't use like, savage as have, fuck yeah. to incite the violence. You can't, we can't do that? Heart. Yes, we can. <laughs> That's like, what we're okay, here for. So, it's but, in my contract. That's yeah. part of my writer. Okay. I get to incite violence. What about comedy-wise? Do we have anybody that... Now, I was joking about Gerard. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <But> Jared? <laughs> what is his fucking name? It's Gerard. Gerard. There you Did go. I say it right? I was jo- I'm joking, and if you take it serious, mm. uh, <laughs> I'm not, I don't want to fight him. Well... All right, listen. So the you point can't is, you want to fight Gerard? Conway, no, 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 yeah, I don't know. Wants, he's not even that, that dude. Would, yeah, that nobody even, wants to fight Gerard. That, wouldn't, that wouldn't last. He's a calm, peaceful last. presence. I know yeah, he's no, a good nobody person. Hates Gerard. <laughs> nobody Shang hates Gerard. Nobody hates Gerard. No, that's Shang bullshit. No, no, no. I'm not the only one. I read a lot of people online that was giving him. Heat, no, but so. want to fight like, him? I'm joking. I don't want to fight Gerard. Jared, Jared. I, I want to fight Jared because Jared did some bullshit in yeah, some no, way. Yeah. But, Jared needs his ass Jared, whoop. Jared need his ass whoop. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, like, yeah, little kids. What's wrong with you? But no, um, do you think that that applies in comedy? Do you think that there's somebody that you go, oh, fuck that. I got to get in the lab and really work on my material so I can get at these these idiots. Uh, when, I, when, I, uh, when I first came out here, um, you know, I do like uh, – the open mic part of the show or something. And then yeah. I'd sit in the back of the laugh factory and, you know, I'd see like, uh, Louis CK going up. Right. Or even right. like Dane cook back then. I'm talking about like 99, 2000. Right. And yeah, like Louis CK back then I'd be sitting in throughout his career, honestly. And uh, he might not be the best reference right now, but <laughs> not he's, at all. He's back. But yeah, but to be yeah. honest, like if you, if you want to ask about writers and people who are like, made me, realize i need to you know hit the hit the sticks it, it was you know somebody like louis ck where you're just like holy shit uh, he just did you know a seven minute bit about hell <laughs> and yeah. it was hilarious well and no, i've I mean, got work to do but yeah that's the segue that's something i did want to talk about though yeah. uh, louis ck is back and yes. uh and a lot of people are upset that the fact that he's um, on stage and he didn't advertise he was coming to do the cellar in New York. And there's people really upset about it. Like, yo, you didn't give us the option whether we want to come see you or not. You just show up at another show. But my thing is, ain't no fucking force fields on the door. If you don't like Louis C.K., tiptoe your ass to fuck out. But they feel like, well, no, I paid. I don't want him on the stage. I, I, I don't think he's been gone long enough for him to come back, to be honest with you. Mm. And I don't think that he he has paid enough penance mm-hmm. to to come back because he's that some of the shit he did that I mean if I just I just can't see Chris Rock even getting the the the, the he got a standing O when he came and uh, Louis did yeah people gave him a standing O it's like really motherfucker what about the people that he jacked off his dick in front of yeah and like y'all don't give a fuck we never give a fuck about the women. Like the women is like, well, fuck these women and your feelings. And Why'd your, she go up there? And your vagina being fucking violated. Fuck you and that. But the dude that did it, well, man, you, I mean, your dick was hard. You had to, your dick was hard. You had to do it. I mean, it's like, uh, you had to jack off Louis. I love Louis as a stand up, and, <laughs> and I, I think he is a funny stand up. Absolutely. And the times I've been around him for years and years and years, he seemed like a cool dude. But what I'm saying is maybe he should wait a little bit longer or at least come out and say something about it, an apology or something. I don't think he's done enough. I don't. Yeah. uh, He hasn't done enough. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't even know what you do to make up for all of that shit. Right. Obviously, you say things and you you apologize. Therapy or something. But really, what what do you do to undo any of that? Right. You don't. Right. So. uh, I don't know. I don't know what the statute of limitations is. I don't know what the time is. There was I, no real crime. Yeah, I think, it's not I think, a crime, but if you jack it's a dick, vi- it's a violation. It is definitely. A, it's it's it, some it, some something's in it. I mean, not a felony or something, but it's it's a crime. You can't go around. It's a crime against. It. It's a crime. Yeah, it's you a crime against morality. It's a crime against <laughs> no, morality no, at least. It's a crime. You cannot go around jacking your dick at people. Indecent exposure, if you, I guess. If, in, in, unless, unless, in private, I guess you can. No, in private, unless they said it's cool. You can't do that to women. Hey, that's actually. I think I think the part. No, 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 <laughs> no. I think yeah. the part though where my dick. where you like kind of block the door or you know kind of back him into a creepy corner or some kind of thing like that. But he used you're his, getting no, into that. No, you know, no. He used his. He Louis C K knew he was Louis C K. Yeah, and he could get away with. I'm these not, are opening comics that need it and they're thirsty. Yeah, of course. And part of it is the woman's fault for sitting there while he finished. You could have fucking walked out. But what about the ones that couldn't walk out? 
I'm just saying, in situations like that, I just think that maybe if he apologized more, did something, but he just came up, didn't do no, didn't even address it, just did jokes about parking meters and waitresses wow. and shit. Well, you should at least address it. Well, no, I mean, I, I, even if you address it in a funny way. I, I kind of have a take on this where it's like, um, if, like, I think he has the right to go. He he could have gone back up the day after <laughs> the accusations, right, and right. and done whatever show he wanted to and say whatever he wants to, right? Um, the audience has the right to do whatever the fuck they want. Maybe maybe Gerard should direct Louis C.K.'s next joint and take the audience out of that and then no! let everybody decide. <laughs> if they're... No, no, because because and I'm I'm saying that opposite, right? To make a point that right. that, that that the power now is in the audience's hands. So well, you know, so when Louis shows up at at your club and if you don't agree with him or whatever, yes, then you walk out. You complain to management. You they don't did. you don't you don't give him a standing. A lot of people did yeah, complain. Yeah, you don't give him a standing O. Uh you demand your money back, right? Like you don't if you maybe you get it, maybe you don't, but you, you take a stand on it. And you, and you leave the show, and that and that is the power. Like when Louis C.K. sees half, seventy five, eighty percent of the room walk the second that he hits the stage, when everybody then maybe yeah, then then a message gets across, right? That okay, I must have done something I, wrong, quote unquote. <laughs> if if it hasn't no, gotten I, across yet, again, I I I I know Louis not that way because he better not jack your dick in front of me. <laughs> yeah, but I and I'm just saying, I I I just feel like. He's he's got to do a little bit more apologizing. Yeah, no, I mean definitely. I I never heard any big statement from him about you know I I feel so ashamed from a thing. Dang, exactly. Uh, and and I get that. You I know, think that that would have helped. He had a letter, didn't he? he but that would have helped. Does, does, do you, do you, you know what I'm saying? That that would have helped if he had been a little bit more like apologetic. But when you're not apologetic, you're just like, no, fuck that. I'm a millionaire. I'm going to do what the fuck I want to do. It does make me make take pause. And as a comic that says crazy shit, but I ain't doing crazy shit. Like, I may joke about fucking midgets, but I ain't fucking midgets. And I'm mm. not taking advantage of midgets because I'm like, well, I'm taller than you, so I'm going to use my tallness over you to hinder your life. The worst thing you do is... But the worst thing you do is call midgets midgets, which yeah. they don't like. They don't but. like midgets. <laughs> so but that's, that's about so it. we already know that you didn't fuck one. <laughs> right, right. Our dwarfs, our Where little people, <laughs> our little people. Uh, I yeah. stand for it. But you know what? Somebody said that it was. I'm going back to J. Cole. J. Cole said he does a joke about Asians. And I mean, he does a in the rhyme. He does a thing about Asians. But he says, I know that that's a stereotype. But at the same time, that's lightweight compared to the shit that they say about black people. Yeah. And and so I know I understand midgets might get I'm sorry dwarves might get upset, I think it's little but people. that's little people. That's lightweight compared to the shit that that's, like a dwarf called, will get more. They don't like being called lightweight either. Uh, not lightweight. <laughs> I'm not calling like light, that. Hey, I'm saying okay, damn. That, I'm making it worse. I mean, you're doing I, a half-ass <laughs> job. Of <laughs> apologizing. I'm saying it's not the same. That's why I get mad at gay people. I, and the gay people, if you listening, I, if you gay, I ain't mad at you being gay, but don't try to. Associates your fight with the civil rights fight because it's two different fucking fights. So stop it, all right? Because if I don't know you gay and you walk into a room and you could be gay, whatever the fuck you're doing at your house, but uh, if you're yeah, black, you black all day. And if, as soon as I walk in the room, there is no, like, you know, uh, there's an un-fucking sung, un, you, can't, you can't wash that away. Like, even I'm, I'm light-skinned and I still get it. It's like America's, I get it from both. I get it from black people and, and white people. It's like America's problem. We would get we would get a lot farther in America if collectively, if all of a, all of white America could just be like, we fucked up. We did you wrong. Like even if you weren't, you obviously weren't there. You didn't beat any slaves. But just just take the blame. Just be like, you know what? That's our bad. You know what I mean? We want the same thing from Louis C.K. Just a, a, a bigger my bad. my bad. Honestly, I would respect him more, or I would respect the return more. I should say his comeback more. If if he if it was de solely dedicated to him talking about that thing, yeah, then I and, have and a try, problem trying to work through it at least. Making funny, you got to make it funny. But I have a problem jacking my dick in front of <laughs> women. Yeah, like that, it's and even though I I say, hey, can I jack my can I pull my dick out? And if they say no, don't pull your dick out. Too late, it's already out. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Shane pulls first, ask questions later. <laughs> Here's the thing, right? Like if he goes out there and addresses it, he will have spent some time and and. You, he could prove to an audience that he has spent some time processing it, right? Thinking about it, 
thinking about the wrongs of it, right? And 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 while we joke as comedians and we turn but the best comedy is when we turn dark, ugly, nasty things into into funny. Like when we can find some bright side on it. I don't I don't know what it is for him, right? Like I've never been through this thing and You ain't never come on, Pedro, you ain't never jacked your dick in front of a female comic when you was doing a tour. Not to let her live and tell about it. <laughs> No one that said no. <laughs> ah. They didn't remember the next morning, I'll tell you that. Well, after you put the pill in the drink, One more bam. sip, girl. Just no. one more. No, I, I, I've I, never done any. I've never even used my, I don't have any power. I don't want to be, I don't want to be able to empathize with, yeah. <laughs> with Louis C.K. on this, right? I don't, I don't even want to know what this feels like. But it, However, it was a big story. It was a big story. It was actually, if you, you literally turn on, uh, you, you know, your computer, it was one of the first stories that's trending. No, that I did I did hear he's back. He's back. No, yeah. he's flat out he's, doing he's, sets. He's, he's doing sets. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's disappointing to hear that he's not addressing. Because I literally thought, if there's anybody, it's it's him. He's that dude that would take something ugly and awkward and, and make it funny. foul like yeah. this and possibly make it funny, poignant, and something that he could learn from and maybe... Other molester motherfuckers or Me Too motherfuckers could actually learn from Did this. you say other molester motherfuckers? I, I don't follow all the hashtags, <laughs> I, but I think saying, that's one of them. The fact like, like, Hashtag the, molester like, like the other molesters look up to him like, yo, man, <laughs> we finally got a champion. <laughs> that, last that last that last <laughs> That last shit you did where you jacked your dick, man, that was some classic shit. That was like, classic like I don't think there's, like you said, those other molester motherfuckers, like there's camps of molesters. You know, there's a group. There, there's an organization called NAMBLA. What? It's the North American Man Boy Love Association. Uh, I first heard about this. What? I first heard about this on the episode. No! Hold on, hold on. Dude, are you serious? Are you joking? I've, no, no, no. About about man boy love. About 15, 16, 17 years ago, I heard uh they, they brought this, they did an episode of South Park on this. Yeah. And I thought it was a, I thought it was a fucking joke, right? It just sounds like some they're like Nambla, <laughs> the National Association of Man Boy Love. And and uh yeah, then I went online and it's There's, a it's a wow. website with dudes and like with boys next to them. They're like, the love between a man and a boy is natural and has always been through all time. And I'm like, like what kind of love? You though? need to change the watch in your battery, dog. Like, wow, like that ain't it ain't never been a time for that. <laughs> I gotta admit, I've been doing this show and Savage as fuck has gone there, but this is the first time I heard of this website. Nambla North. Nambla. Well, I don't even want to say the title anymore. Cause yeah, because you know people gonna go, and now I'm gonna go look it up, and but, I'm gonna post it on other people's pages. I have, I <laughs> it, it, this was decades ago that I looked at this, so I'm, I would be. I would be hurt if it was still a, an operating website <laughs> that was openly promoting. Well, white nationalist website still up, so yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, they have like, isn't there? Aren't there those those uh, p what is it, pedophilia? But like Pe- pedophilia. Oh, pedophilia, but like proud. Not oh. proud, but like saying proud and I don't petty. practice it. <laughs> oh wow! I, I just have the think. thoughts, but I just don't practice. But it. you know and what? It's like they think that that's a movement. It's not, not a movement. <laughs> <laughs> You well, know, it like, is kind of. I a, it's mean, a, to be honest, the Catholic it, Church. If, 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 it's a step. Yeah, it's better than the Catholic Church. The Catholic for Church sure. stance like, is horrible. <laughs> like that's like opposite. if you if, opposite no, if you fuck them. a kid, they move you to another church to fuck more kids. It's like it's like a fuck kid tour. Uh, I, it's like I can't believe that they they said that there is twenty seven thousand fucking lawsuits happening against the against church. the Catholic Church. For fucking church, like them fucking kids. That's crazy. And these people are still following this church. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. So that's why when you say that type of shit, I go, I'm not surprised by nothing. That's why I said Trump's gonna win. He is gonna, he's <laughs> gonna, he's gonna get another term, and the world is is shit. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but you know what's not shit? This show, man. We this are, show we is are not. the shit, man. This is Savage as Fuck on Dash Radio. I'm Black Pedro. Yo, this is Shang. Yeah, y'all. And make sure you download download the app on um, on the App Store at Dash Radio. Okay, yes, sir. But we got a live show happening. Live show tomorrow night. Tomorrow, uh, 8 p.m. Right. Uh, Oxnard, you're looking, you're Levity looking Live, because right? we haven't right. set the time yet, so I just realized I that. Is it eight, it's uh, 8 p.m. Yeah, Oxnard, 8 p.m. Levity Live. That's Ventura County, California, y'all. Come out. It's uh myself, Shang, Jeff Urea. We've got a great lineup for you. It's Savage as Robert Zapata. Live, Robert Zapata, live in your face in your neighborhood. Uh, you can also catch us next Tuesday at Los Globos Theater in Silver Lake. Uh, that's a comedy pop up event. 
Uh, for those who don't know, Comedy Pop Up, they put us up on iTunes and uh, Stitcher and Google Play, Google Play. every yeah. week. So uh, if you're catching us on those platforms, thanks to those guys. And come on out. That's also going to be a very, very hot show um, for everybody to come and enjoy. Uh, yes. Uh, that's the show for the day, dog. Like we 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 just man, about we blew there. through it. Yeah, man. I'm gonna do a little little recap for those who are just joining us. You still got and, uh, ten minutes. What'd you say? We still got ten minutes. I know, but we're gonna we're gonna start we to gotta wind. Do a recap. This is, we're gonna do a little wind we down. Recap. We gotta a little do bit a of a wind down. We gotta do a recap. Catch the brick down. Uh, <laughs> 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 what the fuck was that? That's uh. What the god squam board and gave us but they do Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's actually a real song. It's, it's Pathwa. There you go, Jamaican. I know Patwa. Jerk. Uh, Jerk. So we did. We, we, Jerk chicken. We popped off the show uh, talking about our, our esteemed president, Donald Putin. Uh, Donald Putin, the uh, orange fuckstick in charge. He can't even get invited to a funeral That's nowadays. That's crazy. Guys. You understand? Dead That's people. That's crazy. Dead motherfuckers don't want to hang with him. That means he would not be invited to a weekend at Bernie's. Yeah, <laughs> like, they would be like, Bernie no. would not even want to hang Bernie with Bernie told us, I'm sorry, man, we got to see your ID. Bernie told us we, he didn't want you here. But Bernie's been dead for years. <laughs> I don't care. We're not talking about Bernie Sanders either. His daughter, guys. by the way, I just got to say, his daughter went in and there was a lot of little velved, like they, like she hit him hard. With McCain's daughter? McCain's daughter oh. said... Cause you know America's always been great. That was a that was a jab at Trump. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was a, a clearly clearly a jab. But and I was also, sitting there going, "Whoa!" Also, it's not a true statement though. <laughs> yeah. so I get I get what I she get, was doing. But I'm, I get America what she was doing. Always been yeah, great. But what I'm saying is, there she was said pe- my da- the, the America my dad was in was great or something yeah. like that. But something she, like, yeah. she she related she, it she, to her. Dad. She related to her dad. But I'm telling you, there was everybody that was speaking on his behalf and mm-hmm. talking about McCain was jabbing at Trump. If you looked at it, everybody was like, yo, you're petty. You're a little bitch. <laughs> like, one dude just said, yo, man, you flat out, you just a bitch. Said that about Trump? Yeah, just said, like, I was like, oh, shit. They, yeah. going, they <laughs> yeah. going in on him. Like, yo, man, fuck that, son. As if I see should. you in the street, son, all I'm saying, all <laughs> I'm saying, son, I'm putting these hands on you. You know who ain't no bitch is uh, Big Colin Kaepernick. We also yo, talked about that on today's great show. Ad. And if you get a chance, I've been sharing the ad. Mm-hmm. I shared it on Instagram. I got a ton of hits, like, real quick. It is one of the more, I, I like the way they did it. Yeah, and, no, no. And it's, visually, it's good. And Serena's is good. It says, you, you can be, the, where she said. You could, take the, you could take the costume from the superhero, no, but no, you can't no. take her powers. No, no, A new one. Oh, I haven't seen said, that. Where she said something about in a Compton. You can be a tennis player from Compton and... Uh, and something and you and own it. I can't. I put it on my page. It's on my page. <laughs> and we will still great, fuck you up. That's how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Basically, <laughs> said you know you could be from Compton and and run tennis. That's it. Don't matter. So for those, did, did you see the the tutus she's been wearing? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. She's been yeah. wearing tutus in response to her uh, Catwoman suit. Her Catwoman suit. Yeah, she was at the U.S. Open giving it to him. Uh, so yeah, Nike backs Colin Kaepernick. Made him the face of their uh, 30th annual Just Do It campaign. And gave him a shoe. He got a shoe, too. He's getting his own shoe. Yeah, he's, he's got his own line coming out, which is interesting. He's not even in the league right now. Um, we also did a, a small little recap of, of Auntie Riri's uh, funeral there. Yes. Um, what you want? Baby, I got it. Her funeral was uh, eight hours. Our recap was only six. So yeah. I think I think I think we did our part. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, part two of it is going to be released later That's on. That's right. Yeah, the sequel. <laughs> the sequel of it. Uh, um, my Black Pedro ponders this week. Uh, I did. Uh, what the hell did I even talk about? Oh God! The <laughs> guy just, from Cosby Show yeah, 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 was yeah. seen bagging <laughs> groceries. <laughs> that quick, and I people forgot. went online. And it, it meant so much to me. <laughs> it, went, it meant so much to my heart. Oh, um, I'm yeah. shang has to remind you. What I you know. I usually, I usually have all of that. Yeah, but, you got uh, that. Shit. The fact that I had to remind you. Yeah, yeah, no. Man, but you know uh, how stupid I am. <laughs> <laughs> so what that say about you, bro? No, but uh, actor actor Jeffrey Owens, uh, yeah. formerly of the Cosby Show, was recently found uh, working at a, a Trader Joe's, and you know they tried to shame him on the internet, but it, it's turned out to be a great story, and he's back on the scene now. He's back on the scene. Uh, Tyler Perry um, hired him. Hired him, and so yeah, basically. Yeah. But you know, we kind of just talked about how you know we got to hustle out here in in, in California in a right. way to make our comedy. Dreams don't always pay the bills. Yeah, sometimes we, that's male prostitution. Sometimes, <laughs> I like at least that's what I do. I don't know, but I know Jeff for sure. Definitely male prostitution. What if he set it up? Uh, what if he set it up like, so that somebody blow me up? Like a yeah. great scheme from his agent. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm, I want that agent. Then. I want I'm that agent to get you out. What there. I need you to do, Pedro, is bag groceries. <laughs> Two step backs, four step forward. That's do you what understand? We're doing. And then boom, you're on a drama, and you're the star. <laughs> you're a star. Yeah, star. Uh, 
uh, after the break, we got in second half of the show. We uh, talked about um, how the the New Yorker almost fucked up their whole comedy festival, right? By headlining Steve Bannon. Yeah, that was a dumb and smart move a, at the same time. A domino effect of, of, of fallouts. Um, um, also, Brazil. <laughs> yeah. Fire. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Up in smoke, baby. Yeah, they uh they lost a lot of shit. The uh, the na- the largest his- history museum in all of Latin America. America, which is sad that Latin America would lose that. But get your shit together. That burned down. That burned down in uh, Brazil. And then uh, we talked about the return of El Gringo. That's right, the white boy. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, Eminem coming back. From and we D. also we talked about the perceived white boy who is actually half Mexican or Mexican. Ooh, um, MGK, Louis, Louis, Louis C.K. Okay. <laughs> no, Louis C.K. is not. Uh, isn't oh, yeah, he, he is some mixed thing. He is mixed. Something. Yeah, I think he's, yeah. But, yeah, so, uh, yeah, two, gr- two, two different gr- reasons. Two gringos are back. Two gringos are back. One, <laughs> one in rap. rap. One in rap. One one in comedy. Yeah, comedy. Two, two different, yeah. We don't want you to think that Eminem came back and started jacking his dick in front of women. But they, they both have assaulted people. They have, absolutely. Eminem with his fists and gun butts and yeah. Louis C.K. with his dick. Yeah. Uh, but you know what's the difference? What's the difference? <laughs> they Same both, shit. They <laughs> both shooting blanks. So whatever. Yeah. Ayo, <laughs> nobody. All right, nobody. whatever. Fuck all. Nobody. You, fuck all y'all. That was hey good. guys, this is uh, Savage as fuck. So just reminders one more time, guys. We do have Savage as fuck. We're going live. In Ox- your face. Oxnard, in Co- your face. California. But tomorrow. that really in your face. No, like yeah. really in your face. Like really in your face. We and should Oxnard. call it. Well, you got We should call it when it's a live show. We should call it in your face. In your face. So Savage as fuck in your face. In your face. I like that. We're coming up with our this show is live. live. Yeah. Live. And we're this gonna, is live. We're live now. We're live right now. People are in on our brainstorming right now. This is what we're gonna. Well, this, so, is, okay. this is producing. But the show will be at eight o'clock p.m. in Oxnard, California, at Levity Live. Make sure you come out. We got Jeff Urias on the show. We got Denise Carter. Robert Zapata. That's right. Um, Black Pedro. Shanga uh, Dangs. And, and myself, and um, also uh, Terrence Washington will and be follow, follow hosting. Follow us on Facebook. Facebook will have and follow all, all on of Facebook. This information. All the information will be on Facebook. And thank you guys for supporting the live shows. You guys have shown up and been really, really good, really yeah. good crowds. We do um, appreciate that for surprisingly sure. Surprisingly good. I didn't think you'd be that good. I'm. Because I'm being pessimistic, but you uh, were uh, awesome. And if you're in the Los Angeles area, remember next week, September 11th, we are going to be at Los Globos Theater in Silver Lake. Uh, you can hit us up again, me at Black Pedro on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, you can always holler at Comedian Shang on Instagram. That's S H A N G for the people calling me Shank. And Shang <laughs> or like Shane. Shane. No, it's S H A N G. Like Dang. Like Dio dang. Shang. Yep, it's just like Dang. Dang and Shang. Dang Shang. Shang. Yes, that's that's the real name. Too. This is a Dang Shang thing, ain't it? It's yeah. <laughs> my real name. It's one of them Dang Shang things, ain't it? <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, man, make sure you guys follow us up. Uh, Oxnard tomorrow. We're at Los Global since uh, Silver Lake next week. Uh, you know, follow us, guys. Facebook. And, and we're going to be uh, in a couple weeks. I wanted to make sure you know there's going to be a lot of big things happening with Savage as fuck. That's right. And, and, and Dash weeks. Comedy. In, in two weeks. And Dash weeks. Comedy. Yeah. We're like 13 yeah. days away from, from Dash Comedy going to the next level, we're from definitely. Savage as fuck going to the more savager level. We're going to be even more savager. We're going to be savages. Way more savager. We're going to be the most savage fuck. And, and the uh, most all, savagest. All, yeah, so I want to let you know, um, look out for that. we got a lot of big shit going on with Savage as fuck. And myself, Pedro, everybody, thanks you for uh, listening to the show. And tune in next week, y'all. Holla. Out. Did you say? Back just to give up.